Go. All right, we got Alejandro de Hoyos on the podcast, the BFR podcast. That was so amazing to get Alejandro on here. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, sir. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank um, you for the opportunity. <clears throat> Taking your time out the day after you just came back from Kenya. Oh, man. I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> I'm so ready for this. Lot, we got a lot to talk about. We have a ton to talk about. Um, we, man, just before this started, we were already talking about a whole lot. So yeah, we were. We were. Um, we had to hit the record button, or else we would have kept going. <clears throat> yeah. So Alejandro de Hoyos, uh, what do you do for a living? What I mean, first and foremost. Oh man, that's such a loaded question. It is. Um, right now, I'm a full-time filmmaker, evangelist, missionary, humanitarian. And uh, I travel the world uh, with different organizations and ministries, NGOs, nonprofits. Uh, and I help them with uh, video, photo, I help them with media. And I get to travel the world to, from, you know, India to Pakistan to Cuba and Mexico and do all these uh, amazing works and work with some amazing organizations. But when I'm not traveling, uh, I'm, with, I'm with the San Antonio Spurs. I'm part of the broadcast crew and I, uh, I'm the, most of the nights you can find me courtside. Uh, nice. Shooting the game for you know ESPN, TNT, Fox, uh, Bally, and you know wow. oh, it's Bally Sports, Bally now Sports. For the local. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, said that is a loaded answer, probably the yeah. most loaded answer we've had for a guest. He's like um, Batman, which is a, which is exciting and great. Really, <laughs> yeah. like you hate yeah, the Joker? Night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we hate the Joker, bro. Go we down. Do? Yeah, Nuggets are going down. Oh, not this year though. No, they're not going down this year. Yeah, they're probably going to win. Joker's it having a good season. Yeah. yeah, Joker is having a. But what do y'all think about Joaquin Phoenix though? <laughs> oh, amazing Joker! <laughs> He's an amazing. No, Joker. I can't wait no. to see um, Harley Quinn in the next one. Yeah. Oh, that's Lady Gaga, which is Alejandro. What? Oh, no. <laughs> yes. That Harley Quinn is going to be Lady Gaga. Yeah. Or Lady Gaga is going to be Harley Quinn. Whatever. Yeah. Damn. Um. That's a whole lot, man. That that loads us up. Um, but first and foremost, your husband and father. How many I kids? Am. I have two kids. Two yeah, kids. My, my son Leonardo. He's eight years old. Mm -hmm. uh, his name's Leonardo Israel de Hoyos. Awesome. Uh, and my daughter is Eliana Nazareth de Hoyos, and she's four. So we have a good mix. Great names. O older older son, younger daughter. How old was the son again? Eight. 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 Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. You know. My name's Alejandro, so mm -hmm. it took me a good while before I could find a strong name for my son. Yeah. So. You know, when you just don't pick them real easy, you gotta kind of take your time. And uh, yeah, he, he's uh, he's doing good. He's in the golf right now. So oh really? Yeah, I was in golf. The, yeah, I was in the golf when I was. You said he's eighty or eight? eight. How old? Eight. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, eight. Okay. Yeah, eight years old. Usually it takes men a, lot, a while, guys, a long, yeah. a little bit to get into golf. Eight, eight years old. He's doing golf. He's having a blast. He's amazing. winning. And, really? Yeah, and oh, he's doing, doing competitively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. They have yeah, golf so, leagues in San Antonio. Yeah, little kids. Yeah, they go and do do tournaments. And so now I'm. You know, if I want to be involved, like I got to go find some clubs now. Yeah. And, you know, kind of get back on the range and try to get back into the what is are, swing of things. Are, yeah, yeah. I like that. Are there holes like smaller? 
like, yeah, like part threes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are okay. those are a lot of fun. I play. Mm-hmm. I, I We're do, keeping it clean. I yeah. know. I was like, <laughs> Mike, we talked yeah. about this before the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> part threes are good for you know the young ones, uh, and I used to I used to play those when I was in middle school, and you know I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the game when I was younger. So oh uh, wow yeah. So I need to get get back into that sort of father son time. You know? Which one's your favorite kid? <laughs> Trick question. Yeah. yeah. Y'all don't like, have favorite kids? Well, no, one's my favorite girl, one's my favorite boy, no, right? I, oh, they're they're more like I do have favorite kid. They're more like favorite at a certain time. Ah, yeah, I mean, yeah, got you. Yeah. Or for certain reasons, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're you're the favorite for this, you know, you're the favorite for like, that. Right now you're here, you're my favorite. You know? Yeah. You're, yeah, you're, exactly. Your, your you're sister's bullying. staying at grandma's, so yeah. she's on yeah, yeah, so I feel that 100%. It's Father Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? But that's the that same goes in reverse. You know, if my son's staying at grandma's, my yeah. daughter will say, "It's father daughter day today." You know, let's go on an adventure. And so I'm okay. We go on an adventure. You know, that's does she great. does she have you wrapped around her finger? Uh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I have I mean, a daughter on the way. That's why I'm asking. Oh man, it's a baby it's, girl. Oh, so congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful adventure. You know, they're both completely different. Uh, but I mean, my goodness, they give you the the eyes and. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my, my daughter. Either one, yeah, right? My, my daughter does this pouting lip thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, fine. Like that. Sure. Yep. Let's do it. Adventure. Fine. Yeah. Um, how old were you when you had your first kid? Oh, oh that's a. Mm, how old was I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, I don't know. That's a good question. I know. Oh. <laughs> that's a, that's well, I get I, paid for this. <laughs> I don't get paid for this. No, I think I was like. 20, so, okay, let's do the math. How old are you right now? <laughs> 37 now. 37 now. How old is your oldest kid? He's eight. Eight. So, 29. 29. Yeah. Wow. So, 29, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it definitely is a life-changing thing. Right. Uh, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, being being on the road or doing the spurs every night, mm-hmm. or, you know, weekends, nights, those are gone. And then traveling now, doing so much traveling. Mm-hmm. Th- those things I've had to... Uh, Sort of take it trip by trip, trip by trip basis, and right. uh, make sure that I'm spending that good quality time with the family and my kids and my wife. And you know, I try to do uh, a, a trip to the nations and then a, a vacation with the family. Or, you know, oh, nice! So you got a good trip or, Yeah, I, I, I try, but sure. Sometimes I get a little out of hand, and you know, I go to Honduras and then Mexico and then Ukraine and then you know Honduras yep. again and then back to Ukraine and then you right. know, all of a sudden, like you're traveling for many weeks out of the year. And, yeah. It's kind of wild. And, you know, as a father and as a present father, you know, which I'm sure you are, you know, it, it even though you're doing these are mostly missionary trips, right? And and trips to bring light to these struggling yeah. situations. Yeah. Um, you still feel guilty about I'm doing a whole lot yeah. and, and and I'm not there for the kids, even though you're doing for humanity. Yeah. Right. Uh the humanity in your home, yeah, you know, is taking a little bit of a backseat, but you're doing it for for good reason, right? Yeah. You're not I, going out and partying. No, it's ain't a vacation, <laughs> right? You're yeah. not, you're not an entertainer, you know, rapper or whatever, you know. Yeah. This is all for the good of humanity. It yeah. seems like, and and the kids see it. They see the the videos I bring back. They see the photos that I bring back. They see, you know, that we've been in an area that was, you know, hit by drought, or we were in an area where the kids don't have any, you know, food, not not much to eat. There's orphans, you know, and we're feeding them, and so they see that, and they understand the importance of like, okay, we can't throw away water. We can't throw away our food. Like, I need yeah. to show that to my kids, bro. Bro, my when my son was younger, he he had this thing where he would go to the you know dish rack, he'd get a cup, he'd go to the fridge and just fill it up, you know, a bunch of water. He'd take one drink, maybe two, and then he'd throw the rest in the sink. After a while, I was like, oh my goodness, no, 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 sit down. I need to show you this video I shot in uh, Bamba, Kenya, you know, which is in the Khalifi district, which is this town that's very drought stricken. Mm -hmm. And what's really sad about this particular town is it's at the crossroads of a bunch of other bigger towns. So a lot of people go through there, but this particular place is, is, it has all over the town what the locals call white elephants. And so the white elephants are these projects Mm -hmm. that NGOs or or nonprofits come to this town and they say, oh, well, you know, you guys have a drought, so we need to build a solar windmill to bring up water we need to build a well here we need to build a man-made water lake you know we're going to dig out and you need all these projects right they come in they build a project they take photos they take videos and then they leave and then the project very quickly 
like falls into disrepair, wow. breaks down. There's no money for a repair. There's no money to keep upkeep. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is either uh, corruption or just, you know, nobody thinking right. for long the future. Term. Long but term. they're also just doing it to up their status. Up their status. Yeah. Oh, we did X, Y, Z. Right. And, and then so, we left them there. But nobody knows and, that we left and, them there. And so I, I visited this place and there's so many white elephant projects. Just wow. pipes to things they're, that don't have water. dead projects? Dead projects all over. Like, oh my God. These people are suffering big time. Where, and where is this? It's in Kenya, Kenya. A place called Bamba. And yeah, it's, 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 it's a tough, tough area there. But I, I've been a few times. I made a, a video for them to try to bring attention, awareness and attention uh-huh. to this issue. Uh, and so I brought that video back and I got to show it to my son. I said, look, these people don't have water. Right. We need to respect the water that we have. I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even think twice about my kid taking one drink out of water that he poured out of the yeah. faucet or out of the, uh, the fridge. I would never think that. would be like, you wasted water. That these people would go and build like water. That too. That, and then they would just leave it alone. Like, yeah, why wouldn't dude. you maintain the upkeep? That's what you think. When you see the videos, you yeah. think, oh, great. Somebody's, somebody's there to help something. them. You know what's got you too? Wow. Is that each one of these projects has like a sign that has all the people involved. Oh. And, they're, and they're all like rusted and falling apart. So you can go now you and say- You know like, who they are. You know who these people are. You know the <gasps> countries that put up the money. You know the organizations that put up the money. And yeah, so I- But I, nobody I wants to pick a fight with them. No, nah, they, you know. So so what's great about this place, Bamba, is they've mm-hmm. they've taken their residents and they, they've they put together like a, a, a community action council. And so now if a M- nonprofit or an NGO goes to their spot and say, you know what, you need this. They say, no, 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 we're going to talk about it. And we're going to we, tell you what we need. We'll tell you what we ah. need instead of people coming and bossing them around. Right. And, and we need a commitment. Yes. For Good. the future, for upkeep, for, yeah. you know. Uh, and, but yeah, I've seen it, man, all over those places. And then that tests them. Are you here for the long run or are yeah. you not? Yeah. Are you really wanting the help or are you just coming right. to take some photos and videos and get out of here? And wow. so, yeah, I can't, can't wait to go back. It's a very small town, uh, but a lot of good people are there. Made some good connections there. And yeah, I, I've been working on getting them some water filters and some some ways. I'm working with some friends to to better uh, figure out ways for them to keep the water because when it they do have rainy seasons. I mean, it is a drought, mm-hmm. but when it, the rainy season comes, like they have no way to to maintain to keep it, water to right? maintain. Mm-hmm. So it's a work in progress. But uh, Bamba is is you know white elephant capital. Just so many projects there. It's just why? It's a, why do you think it, that? Sad. That location is 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 ripe for for elephant projects. Uh, well, you know, if you're if you're looking at you know Africa and well, who needs help or where are their problems, you know, you're gonna go somewhere where you can get an easy win. I would think. Right. And so they go, oh, we're gonna build a well, and here's the thing, you know. But corruption. But why Bamba? Is this the safest place to go to Kenya? I don't. I don't know. Well, poor Bamba. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I need mean, a Richie Valance. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hmm. There's something we could do something there, right? La Bamba, Bamba. Something. We can get the Hispanics on board. You're talking to a creative producer here. I so know. Already, <laughs> already thinking. How do I, okay, you know, we can tie song. this in. Yes. Let's reach out to Africa. Lou Diamond Phillips. Mm-hmm. Lou Diamond Phillips then goes to Africa, mm-hmm. starts putting in wells. That's how it happens. Right. That's the white works. elephant, La Bamba. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, and you get Isai Morales there too. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he. Yeah. Why not get them all? You know. And I don't know who that is. You Bob don't know who he's oh. Bob from La Bamba. Oh, is that what his name That's is? That's why I named my youngest son. Oh, after. Okay, get his head. Bob from La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. I guess I Damn! Look it. at him now. Yeah, there he is. He, yeah, he aged well. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. He's more handsome now than he was back then. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to hold a grudge. <laughs> yeah, I didn't ever hold a grudge. Man. I I was I I empathized with him. Oh oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Him for so long. You hated him. Did you? Why? Why? What do they call me at, at the family? Oh, Richie. Yep. And yeah. everybody ah, shouts, Richie. 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 Oh, I'm my Richie, Bob. I'm all, and now I love it. It's like, and yeah, again, my, my youngest son's named after him. Like specifically after him. Oh, We're watching okay. La Bamba one He's day. Like, because your wife oh. thought of him? Yeah. yeah she got out his name. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. My bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I need to have you sign a contract really, next time. <laughs> really 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 so again. real quick, going back to kind of the, the traveling and having a family, do you like, you, you probably stay up to like two, three in the morning just to be able to FaceTime them and say, hey kids, have a good yes. day at school. And is, yes, that's helped a big time actually. The FaceTiming and Skyping has helped. Skyping is kind of dated, but I used, that was yeah. first. I used that's to do all, that that's first. That's going way back. But yeah, right. any of those video things, 
really clutch. But they know now. what you're going and doing, right? Uh, yeah, now they do. They have yeah. a, a better sense now. Have but you taken them? Younger, like, I mean, I know they're kind of young. Like the eight-year-old, have you? No, like, like no, to Mexico, not, yeah. not to... Yeah, to Ukraine. Did you take your kids yeah, you to Ukraine? Yeah, take them to the middle of a war. Yeah, war how, 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 <laughs> take your kids to the <laughs> like jungles to, of Congo. To yeah, exactly. This time, dude. Why were you well, taking you know, them to like Korea, they Ukraine? In the, in the cartel Mexico. Yeah, exactly. Did you like maybe they take your kids prop- with you? You deadbeat. The <laughs> big city is Cuba. Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I want to take them. You're going to get better at this. I know. I know there's… I've met families who are out there who who Mm -hmm. can take their families. You know, I've met filmmakers who take their families. I've met preachers and humanitarians and missionaries. For some of these people, that works. My wife, God bless her, she Mm -hmm. is a art teacher. She teaches middle school art for SAISD. Nice. Uh, She just won Teacher of the Year this year. Oh, congrats to her. She's a phenomenal artist. She loves what she does. And… She's on a teacher schedule. So that yeah. means she's at home and she right. only has the holidays. And so a lot of times the tra- just the traveling doesn't work. Wow. And so I'd love to take them. I'd love to take my kids. Yeah. You know, I'd love to take them to Kenya. I'd love to take them to Uganda. All these beautiful areas mm-hmm. I've seen. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, some of the places I go are not that right. oh, yeah. safe. friendly, safe. Um, you know, but somebody adverse. needs to go. You know? Yeah, somebody um, does. Uh, and... Shout out to your wife, you know, because being a teacher and, you know, raising children yeah. that are not hers, but also, you know, when you have to go and, and do this work that you're doing, yeah. you know, for, for God, this is God's work you're doing. Um, she's able to pull that extra shift and and do yeah. that. I know how hard it is to do yeah. that, you know, and that's Yeah. So I do I try testament. my best to to like help her before I go. Right. And then, like, triple help her when I get back. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, you, you've been caring, mm-hmm. you know, maintaining the home, taking care of the kids, right. handling all the life stuff, and I just, you know, get to go and mm. try you, to focus. Humanity needs you. Yeah, but… You should have stole one. I know some, it's still… You still battle yeah, with that. it's yeah. tough. But, but the technology's helped. The calls have helped. Yeah. And, and it is worth me staying up. I mean… It, I, once you go international, like your life is never the same. The same, right? You're up late. You're 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 up early. Mm-hmm. You're taking those calls because those are the only times you can yeah. take them. You know, so every day I put the kids to bed, I put my wife to bed, and then my phone starts blowing up <laughs> from you know India, from really? Pakistan, from Africa. You know, as the sun starts to go across, you're getting continents. phone calls. Oh yeah, phone calls. As they're waking text. up, they're, yeah, they're, they're sending. You up. Yeah, they're, they're they're sending messages. You know, they're asking uh, for word, help. Help, words yeah. of encouragement. You know, prayer. You know, and, and a lot of that. That's how you maintain these relationships, man. That's how you maintain those friendships. You just got to be on it. You know, just got to. Yeah. You can't ghost people forever, you know. Yeah. Sometimes oh, I'm. Damn, I can't. Maybe <laughs> I'm editing something, or maybe I'm working on something. I'm like really focused, and you know, I can see those messages adding up, and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh man, I gotta. Thank you for not ghosting us. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm happy you guys. You know, we worked out a date because you know. Yeah. It, it, oh, was it a battle? I don't know. He's our booking agent. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't too much of a battle. Oh, cool. No, it wasn't. Too if much. I'm in the it country, it worked out. Yeah. If I'm yeah, in the country, we'll we'll make it. We'll make it happen. That's great. Have I, you ever thought of stealing Tim Duncan's MVP trophy and giving it to your wife for being the MVP of your family? It's <laughs> a great point. <laughs> great um, question. I have thought about thing. how I could get a hold of the keys to the championship <laughs> locker. The the box. <laughs> <laughs> because then I could, you know, take photos and do some social stuff and then put them gently back. And you do got door. a picture with the five though, right? Uh, I do. Yeah, I was, I was there. I was, I was, you, know, I, you were there for the championship? Been, yeah, working yeah. for them. Wow. What was that? How long have you been working for? Bro, this, my, uh, this was just my 20th season. I celebrated wow. 20 seasons, bro. Where did the time You were go? there for the heyday. Yeah, I've, I've seen the entire I've, big I've seen three. the dynasty. I, 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 I praise God. You know, I, I got a call when I did. 100%. You know. but I, was in, I was in high school. It's a good story. How did you get that call? So uh, long story short, I'm in high school. I'm in Sam Houston High School. I'm in second period. And I remember I just got a cell phone. A flip it? phone? It, no, the razor? Brick phones, it, it, no, Nokia. the brick. It was Nokia. Nokia. It wasn't even the, the flip phone. Yeah. With the snake yeah. game on it? Snake game. Yeah. Snake game, you know. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> my phone was so new, uh, like nobody would call. Mm-hmm. Like nobody had my number, mm-hmm. you know. And then nobody's calling from India. Nobody's calling. You know, <laughs> this was, you know, I'm in high school. I'm what? Telemarketing. 17. Maybe. 17. Mm-hmm. And the phone rings. And so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. I'm like, 
Why is the phone ringing? You're at school? I'm at school. Oh, shit. Second period. I'm in I'm in band class. Mm -hmm. Sam Houston band. Shout out. Sam Houston band. Shout out line. to the Sam Houston band. S-A-I-S-D, baby. <laughs> drum line. <laughs> drum line. <laughs> and so we're there. I'm I'm there in, in band practice and the phone rings. And so I answer it. And it's a friend of mine who I used to work with uh, at the church. Uh -huh. where I got my start. Mm -hmm. And she's doing some work for the Spurs. She was in the broadcast. She was on the broadcast truck. She was oh. doing graphics. Mm -hmm. And so I'd known this girl from back in the day. I've done some uh, volunteer work with her. I've done some PA work and working on short, short films and this and that. I uh, did some work with her at, at KLRN. So I, mm. I knew this lady and she knew that As I was a hustler. As a 17 year old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. I, I mean, I've been hustling. Uh, really? Volunteering, working on short films, you know, PAing here, there. What year was this? Oh, this was one. I know, it's hard for you to 2003. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I knew early on that I wanted to get into the media. Wow. Uh, I'll even go a step back and i'll say uh, you know i got my start in church okay you know i i, oh, you I, I were saw doing i the, saw i saw yeah. the camera in the back of the the, the church and uh -huh. i was really interested in that and i would sort of hang out in the back mm. back row looking at the camera and right you know eventually asked the the preacher hey you know can you can you teach me this camera i want to learn and he told me no <laughs> <laughs> he told me no because i'm just this young kid you know, but that's interesting 12 like, years old how you know? people get interested because most people wouldn't be interested in the camera back yeah. then yeah do you really yeah, what sparked I, that well i I, I always loved technology. I've always loved TV. I love I love mm -hmm. movies. I love taking things apart. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was always very technical like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw that camera. I knew that mm -hmm. that camera was a way to transmit. To I knew from that camera I could make movies and things it went and stuff. Other places. Yeah, but big time. Yeah. And so you know, I would I gravitated towards that camera. And eventually, yeah, the the preacher said, "Yeah, he teach me." I mean, because mm -hmm. the, they only had one camera. You know, and I'm just this twelve year old. You know. Bro, wow. those cameras are expensive. Bro. Yeah. Like some of the cameras I've used over the years, I mean, are, are as much as a car or as a house, you know? So it's a, it's a big time responsibility if you're yeah. going to give a camera to some 12 year old, you know, yeah. a kid. You know, I'm not even a teenager, right? So uh, <laughs> praise God, I was very diligent. I kind of pressed him and he, and he taught me and taught me lighting and, and, and camera and focus and all that stuff, everything, how to do a, a presentation, mm -hmm. how to do a service, you know, how to edit it. And so that's how I started me meeting some other people in the, in the business. Mm -hmm. And and um, shout out to the the my pastor Clark Ortiz for uh, taking the time to, to teach me those fundamentals. Yeah, and the it, big uh, fundamentals, big time. Seriously, <laughs> like uh, those same those same fundamentals have been with me all my career. Yeah, and so it was those same fundamentals and that same work ethic that my my other friend who was working at the church, editing the programs, also working at the Spurs, doing graphics. Mm -hmm. uh, she remembered me. Yeah. When somebody came, uh, somebody called in sick one day at the Spurs. Somebody called in sick. Wow. That's and fucking you amazing. You see, guys, if you're ever going to call in sick and you're thinking, don't do it, do it. You might be giving somebody else an Bro, opportunity. <laughs> uh, my... my <laughs> A 20-year career. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? <laughs> uh, God bless my buddy Joe for calling in sick. Yeah. Uh, he Tell called him. in sick and, and my and my friend Gilda Longoria, she remembered me and she said, well, let me call Alejandro. And so that's when my phone rang in second period. But this wow. time I said, okay, wait a second. I, I don't want to get in trouble here. So mm -hmm. I said, yes, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, great. Call time. Call time 12 o'clock. I was like, oh, wait a second. Like, How? I was so nervous. I thought, okay, well, I'll stay in school. I'll go to practice yeah. and then I'll take, you know, a bus to the game. But then I realized I had, I call time was 12. Yeah. So I, I waited until we did roll call. We uh -huh. did roll call. Oh, I was nice. counted present. And Good then I call. went right out the front door, jumped on the Via bus, and went down to the 18, uh, SBC Center at the time. Yeah. And again, I was so, such a rookie. I went straight up to the front door, and I was like trying to get in. Like, how do you get in here? You know? I didn't realize there was like a back, you know, in the oh, back yeah. entrance under yeah. dock, you know, that you had for employees. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, credentials and everything. And then you know? so somebody opened the door and tell you. No, hey, no, I gotta go back. I would kind of have to find out on figure my own. Out. Yeah, figure, but I made it where I was supposed to be. Got my credentials, and yeah, I was you know, uh, 17 years old on the court in front of 19,000 people. You know, and I'm seeing all these people I've only seen on TV, and I'm there courtside. You know, setting up uh, the cables and the cameras for all these camera guys, and I got to work my first game. And it was, I mean, it was wonderful. And that. That really started my twenty year career with. And the they Spurs. brought you on after that, like, hey, can you, do you uh, want to stay on or? or no, it was it was you? like it was like freelance. Yeah. So once I did that first game, I was uh -huh. sort of in, met everybody, and and just you know, anytime I, other people were sick, or I would I would be able to cover. Mm -hmm. Were you starstruck at all? 
No, I don't. Yeah. I don't think I was. No, not no. At first, or it's just a job. You were there to do a job. Yeah, I was there. I was there to work. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. there to learn. And you know, I I remember I remember seeing all these guys watching the championship in '99. You know, I remember, uh, you know, we'd be at church. The whole yeah. church, we would finish the service early so we could all just go sit down and watch the game together. Right. You know, so for a long time, like for me, church and, and Spurs have always been sort of connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, Man, and those day games always killed us. We uh, I, we always did terrible on day games back then. I, it's I, weird. I think we've improved on our day uh, game percentage. Oh, really? We're probably ruining it lately though, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When the that, dynasty that. kicked in. <laughs> yeah. But the Lakers, man, that time where the times where we were struggling with the Lakers in the early 2000s, I always hated having a day game because I'm like, the Spurs always, yeah. like they never bring it on the day games. It was weird. But so then you ended up becoming full-time. Are you still freelance? Or you, um, like, is well, it, I think what's been great about my time with the Spurs is I've now like worked in so many different departments, mm-hmm. uh, worn so many different hats. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been part time for a good while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was freelance contract, mm-hmm. uh, and then it wasn't until we were working the uh, 2014 finals mm-hmm. that we w- we won. Oh. You know that confetti fell and. You know, I got to hold the championship the trophy in my hands, and I, you know, I'm over here oh. realizing, like, man, this is this is what I've been thinking about since I was that 13 year old kid. You know, seeing the 99 right. championship on TV. Like, now I'm here. Then it and, felt like you were a oh, part of it. Then I was like that. Like it was actually happening. Right. You know, I'd achieved that goal. Of, you but know, weren't you there for the 07? Oh, was I, it right? I was there, but still but freelance. I wasn't. Out. Yeah, oh. I wasn't. I wasn't. Filming on, I wasn't the camera guy. Yeah, oh, so he was handling the cables. Yeah, following so, the camera. So you know, seniority. You work there. You know, you want to get as much experience as you can, and you start sort of jumping around between positions. Yeah, you know, maybe you're you're on the you know camera way up there in the balcony. Or right, doesn't get that much love, but it's there. You're yeah. in, you're in the house. You're working. Yeah. Uh, or there's the a young Alejandro up there right now. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? Yeah, there, uh, the, the, there's a camera guy probably walking plaza level trying to get some cool right. shots. You know, but not feeling like he's fully made fully it there in there, yet. fully in the you know. In but the us, we're things. like, dude, you're filming the Spurs. Yeah. You got a ticket to every game. <laughs> every game <right? laughs> you you're made it, bro. Yeah, it's just you know, one of the things the Spurs talks about is getting better every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I I took that to heart. You know, some of the. A big Spurs rocks, you know, that they, they teach you when you're working there is, uh, you know, you, you're there to improve, you know. And so yeah. for me, being able to shoot a, a, a basketball game is, mm-hmm. is you know, I'm going to give it the best I got. But at right. the same time, I'm going to try to shoot it that much better. I'm going to yeah. try to push the envelope. You know, I'm not just going to shoot it the same way I shot the last game. I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna hustle and try to get a few more shots. Because, you know, when you're on that broadcast crew, you know, and you're shooting a live program, you know, you're trying to get that tally, you know, that you they want it, that director's gonna take you, you know. Mm. Yeah. And and so there's lot. people looking to see, damn, that camera guy got a great, great shot. Yeah, they got all the screens take up it, yeah. and they're like, oh, he's good. So yeah, and we're not. We're just like, okay, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. just another shot. Like, yeah, no, there's him. there's a, a awesome director in, in the TV truck and he's looking at all the, the yeah. shots and he's calling the show as it goes along. And you know, he's giving direction where he can. But these guys, you know, we've been doing it for a long time and, and they know how to shoot a really good game. So there's a lot of trust. The director's trusting the the cameraman to to tell the to tell the story, and that's yeah. what's great about shooting live events and shooting basketball and Spurs is, you know, you never know you never know what's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. It's live. You only have one chance to get it, right? Uh, and you have to be there. You know, like for all these epic moments. You know, I, uh, my goodness, I no, it's your all best the shot. playoffs, the finals. I mean, what's the most iconic shot you feel you've you've been a part of in comp? Um, where you're like, damn, dude, Alejandro. Right there, man. Yeah, I've had some really good. I've I've had some game winners for sure. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've shot some game winners in Did the past. Did you shoot the point four second shot one though? Were you there for the point four second? I was there, Derek Fisher. I, I was there. I I was there. I was not filming, but I was uh, there. That what was, about that the? I was there plan. too. Oh, you were there. I was there, and um, there I was, still don't think he was able to get that shot off in point four seconds. No, was so the thing was was was, <laughs> dude. That season, I'm that season, not to remember that one. that season. I heard um, an announcer say um, in a previous game that like, oh, anything less than point eight seconds, the refs had said they will now count that as yeah. a shot, right? So it came down to that. Timmy hit the fucking shot. 
And I was like, we won, we won, we won. And everybody's like, hold on, hold on. And I was like, no, I heard the refs yeah. won't count it if it's yeah. more than point, if it's less than point eight. And then he fucking hits it. But the crazy thing about that game was um, we were sitting like in section 19, like it was, no, no, it was 19 rows up. And they come and like during a commercial break and they fucking give us big boxes. All of our row had like big boxes, right? And we had to hold them up. And there was a councilman sitting next to me and he was getting pretty drunk. And like he bails, right? He goes like he's going to go to the restroom because he knows what's about to happen and we don't. We're just like, I'll, I'm like, I'll hold the box up, yeah. right? So I'm holding the box up and then everybody in the row is holding the box up, five mm. five boxes. And um, then they put the camera on us. Oh. And then we see what's on the boxes and it spells Lakers on the oh. boxes. And I'm like, Why what? I, like oh. this is, <laughs> what the fuck? Why am I holding this? I just signed up for this. And then the coyote comes behind us oh, with a guy. bat and starts oh. bashing the boxes and it's popcorn mm. and popcorn just oh. falling on us. Yodi. <laughs> Yeah, but that game was the most I've never been so happy and so low yeah, in such that was a quick a tough one. time frame. Um, uh, I, I, remember, uh, was it? I think it was Lakers. Brent Berry they got fouled. The three mm -hmm. eliminated us. That was a tough one because when we went to the locker room to tear down all their equipment, I remember the Lakers had wrote, written on the on the board there. It was a foul, like exclamation point, a couple of vulgarities, and I thought. Wow! Man, how, how? Come on, Lakers. to leave like, it there. To leave it th like oh. that's your go away saying on the you know, whiteboard. <laughs> you're gonna talk some shit. Come that was on. the Kobe era and, oh, and yeah. Shaq. Yeah, that's probably Kobe. I, it himself. was all them. Yeah. You know that's yeah. because it was Malone, all mine. That games. was the Malone. Oh, yeah, the whole Malone. Yeah, yeah. fucking super that team. One. Yeah, super team. They left oh. that there. They wrote it on the thing. Ah, oh, that's that interesting. Was, yeah, that was gotcha. That's when I hated Kobe. Like I love and admire him now. Right, but I hated Kobe yeah, around I, that time. And but seeing him cry, the one, the first time we beat them, oh. and seeing him like, I think that is an iconic shot for a cameraman um, to go to it, him yeah, sitting next yeah. to Shaq. And I don't know if we can see that image. I don't know if it exists. Emotion, man. That's where it's at. Lips just like with people crying. You know, they're devastated. Just to see that, it brought me so much joy back then. It took LeBron James to make me appreciate Kobe Bryant. You don't like LeBron? I do not Spurs. like LeBron. Spurs. No, I definitely admired him. I mean, my goodness. LeBron? Watch, watching him in action. No, yeah, Kobe. so you've seen him in action, Yeah, right? Yeah. We, a lot of it is like, he flops so much and he's blah, blah, blah. But I guess people don't appreciate actually seeing the greatness that is LeBron. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> you don't appreciate well, it? I, I, I don't appreciate what LeBron does, you know what, man. You know what it is? I appreciate um, Kobe for sure. 100%. Kobe did not tout that he was the GOAT. Kobe did not have to put himself out there yeah. and defend himself whenever somebody comes yeah, at he, him. He put in work, man. Right. And LeBron feels like he has to do that. And he has to be on social media touting that he's the king and all of this. LeBron, Kobe was like Mamba mentality. That's all I do. Hard work. Yeah. That's what I do. Yeah. I'm the best. You beat well, me. Well, neither one of them are better than Timmy though, right? Kobe Bryant is better than, Kobe I, I'm sorry. Kobe was not better than Timmy. Kobe Bryant, yes. Is better than Tim Duncan. I disagree. Tim Duncan's one of the greatest players to ever live. Hundred percent greatest fast uh, power I forward. I disagree to ever wholeheartedly. You don't have you don't have to answer this question. You're affiliated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm You're shocked. allowed to abstain here. He's shocked at you. You shocked at me? <laughs> really? Really? Are you all partial to this, or are you legitimately no. saying Kobe Bryant no. is not better than Tim Duncan? Offensively. Huh? All around. All around. Tim oh, Duncan's is what you're better. saying all around. Yeah, Tim Duncan's way better. Okay, you're, you, I, I, I hear you. I hear you because he had Shaq. He had yeah. more people around him who were all stars. Co uh, Tim Duncan built the team. Tim Duncan made a difference from the first, from the they year that he it. wasn't there to the next year that he was there. We'll our, see what Wemby can do. Our winning percentage has been phenomenal, dude. Hundred percent. Trio. I, I hear mean, you. You might change my mind. Setting records. Tim never missed the playoffs. He never missed the playoffs. Tim never missed the playoffs. Oh, did he? He's a nice. He's a nice guy. I look, I've always enjoyed working with that guy. Really? Yeah, he was cool. Very is he a bully like he is? Like um, no, no bully. Way. What? Yeah, you haven't seen him bullying uh, Richard oh, Jefferson. Yeah, that was the, the most the, hilarious yeah. video. Oh, that, that was the best. That was the best. When he I was pushed there for that. Yeah, <laughs> I was there for that. 
Those are hilarious <laughs> videos. But it was it was it was like me messing with him, right? Yeah. He, yeah. Think yeah, he yeah. knew to what to expect. Him. Yeah. Yeah, I like now even Richard because Richard's on the. Uh, on ESPN, yeah, he talks mad stuff. Yeah, he goes. He, up, he goes Spurs, in on right? Tim. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Tim. He's a, Tim's not. Tim wasn't even great. Yeah, <laughs> but he's doing. No, it. I'm not saying that at all. But <laughs> no, but he would do it on like Damn. to get at Tim. Like you know that. Oh yeah, that was he's doing re- it on purpose. But yeah. but nobody gets it. So, Maybe. Night, yeah, night in, night out, bro. He was the best, bro. He was, really. Yeah, he's phenomenal. Phenomenal. He was a great Spurs player too. Definitely. Do you yeah, have a Spurs favorite type of guy? Do you have a favorite of the big three? Manu. Yeah, yeah. He, he, me and him, we got a, we got along very well. You know, we speak Spanish a lot every yeah. now and then. And he he was always open to to do anything creative or fun. Uh, yeah, man, it was. A, did you get the block on James Harden? I, I I did. Oh, absolutely oh. did. Oh, that was one of my favorite. Oh, one of my that's favorites. Your one of most favorite. One of fa- yeah, that's one of my favorite moments. I mean, there's so many. Yeah. Like, uh, Western Conference Finals against Golden State. Manu hit a a three pointer. Uh, to like take the lead and then they got the ball back and then he just real quick took another one and missed. And, it, oh. and, and, and Coach Pop, like they had to call a timeout and Coach Pop said something like, I, uh, oh, and then and then they went back in the game and then Manu got the ball and hit, hit the three to win the game. <laughs> so Coach Pop said, I went from wanting to trade him to cooking and breakfast in the morning. <laughs> but that was Manu. That was Manu. You know, that's in what he does. In a nutshell. And man, he's just a, a, just a wonderful human being. Fun, fun, good. Hall of Famer, uh, but man, yeah, we get along gr- great. And and even now, when I see him in the mm-hmm. hallway or something, like he will holler at me, and we'll chat it up real quick. And, and like even saying, even even when I did one of my travels, uh, I went to do a film in Argentina. Mm-hmm. And so when I got back, I told him, "Hey, I was in Argentina, and bro, Manu is a god in Argentina, brother. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. there is really? messy you know, murals, there's <laughs> posters, Manu. like." I mean, really? he is all over the place, like big Still? time. Still? Oh, yeah, yeah. He was like their first big star, right? Yeah, yeah, for, for sure. So I, when I went there, you know, I was had a, a little bit of my Spurs gear, mm-hmm. but I, I I was just in shock. I was like, wow, this is so cool. All this my new stuff, like really top wow. of line stuff. All over, just promotions and things. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, you know, I told him I went to Argentina. And, you know, we got talking about Argentina. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he's just one of my favorites. He's been a lot of fun. Joe, he likes to joke. You know, he likes to... Uh, make faces and, <laughs> and, and you know mess with you you know the like a lot of times we'll be doing the uh, broadcast we have Sean Elliott Bill Land oh. he'd be one of the guys to come and, and mess with Tim, Timmy would come yeah, and mess with those behind guys him, yeah. you know things like that they're, you would do those shots too yeah 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 uh-huh. yeah. I'm, you know on the you know setting, setting up a shot and you're and sitting Bill. in front of us I, like we always uh, I mean we've been this guy's been killing it on our guests so like we'll, if we had Vanna White's brother on yeah, here yeah yeah I saw like, him that was just a trip for like you're sitting in front of us and you all feel like normal people. Right? Like you just feel like you're, you're a normal guy. Jealous, you're like, oh my god. You wake up every day just like us. You, know? uh, yeah. you worry about your family just like us. You know. No, absolutely. And and you know, I'm there at the Spurs game and I'm you know texting. Oh, it's overtime. Gonna be, might be I'm gonna a little be a little while. late. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's Pop? Oh man, Pop's so good. Very reserved. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been there 20 years, but I've only had maybe. I could count on one hand how many conversations I've had with him, but really? each one is. Well, he doesn't even give them to the super <laughs> to the people that the, yeah. it's a job to yeah. ask them questions. Talk, you, you did yeah. talk about like the um, the the in, uh, the environment there or what they teach you all is mm-hmm. every day getting better. That's yeah. a product of his, yeah. of his philosophy, right? Yeah, you want to pound the rock. Keep so at they it. translate the philosophy on the court to. To mm-hmm. all professions within the sports, within, sports within organization. the organization, yeah, you know the, the teamwork and, and and just a lot of really good stuff that the Spurs themselves, right. you know, go by, and so the rest of the staff emulate that, and so you know we all breathe that same culture, and we all you know we'll walk through the hallway and you know pound the rock, all right, pound the rock, pound the rock. Yeah, how that's do you the how do you feel about Dejounte Murray? What do you mean? Oh, as, as a, oh yeah, as a was, spur, and then he and, left, and then and then he kind of like because he was very he seemed very loyal in his time here. He yeah, did. and then once he left, he was kind of like kinda the Spurs are the Spurs are about fifteen years away from like it's deeper than the organization. So he and, misunderstood it, the organization, I guess, or he just saw what 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 some fancy myself included is like. Oh, they're not so good now. But does that that core philosophy still exist? Like we're not changing that. It's every day you get better. We just don't have the great yeah. players behind yeah. us right now. Yeah, but yeah, we're yeah. still no, building. No, they're still building. They're still following that same blueprint. Right. You know, uh, be- better. You know, better the best. You know. Mm. Yeah. And and 
pop, and, that, to go back to pop, um, I remember one of my favorite interactions with him is, after we won the championship in 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Spurs selected this. Uh, the NBA selected the Spurs to go to the Global Games. So, because the Spurs won the championship, they sent them to Berlin, Germany, to play a game against the uh, basketball team there. Mm-hmm. And then they sent them to Turkey, Istanbul, to do a, a game there with FIBA and all that. All right. And uh, the NBA told the Spurs, "You could send one videographer guy," and they chose me. So I got what? to go, you know, go with them with the NBA. We traveled to Germany. And I was there on the on the crew, uh, shooting, filming the game, yeah, and you know, capturing there for the broadcast there, and that, that was also being shown stateside. Wow! And I remember being um, with a bunch of other videographer guys uh, before the game started, mm-hmm. and we're about, we're behind like a what do you call it, like a fence or something, mm-hmm. and, like a divider. Yeah, a divider. Yeah. And and we're just there chilling, you know, just waiting. And Coach Pop comes walking by. And he sort of looks in our direction and he looks at all these guys, but then he sees me and he sort of pivots and he comes over. Familiar come, face. Yeah, familiar face. It comes over to me. He's like, hey, how, how, how's it going? What, do you, what yeah. are you doing here? Yeah. And I was just like, oh. I was like, oh, uh, hey, hey, coach. You chose me to come here. Hey, coach. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> they sent yeah. one person. <laughs> I, I'm here filming the game on behalf of the Spurs. You know, they, they could only send one. He's like, okay, well, they sent the, you know, he's they like, sent the, they good sent the best one. And, like, oh. yeah, yeah, and then, and then uh, at, at the time, I remember uh, there was some cameraman at the time were getting a backlash from sitting courtside. I think mm-hmm. that was the year, I think Le- LeBron dove like into the, to save a ball and he like cut mm-hmm. his head or something on it a camera. Flop. Like, so it flopped, yeah, yeah I'm pretty, but he cut his head, <laughs> and so there was a there was a little bit of at that that year there was a bit bit of discussion of cameraman courtside should they be there um, why, and you know I'm there courtside you right know, I, I've been I've with been blood on your on. camera yeah right <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been knocked over I've been hit I've been stepped on you know Timmy's hit me Parker you know it Jamal happens buddy, it happens you yeah. know especially Parker, in a game that's bro. Parker, imagine being at the himself. park and sitting on the sidelines somebody's, somebody's gonna run gonna over run. you. Uh, Patty Mills one time no, I ran, Patty Mills, ran into bro. my camera so hard that he snapped off the eyepiece, the thing oh, that's connected shit. to the camera. Like, like I to be honest, I thought I was gonna be on Sports Center. I thought I was knocked out. Like I thought I was like, <laughs> no. like How do you pivot? Not top How do you- ten. Like I thought I was gonna be like <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> not top ten. <laughs> ca- camera broken. I was just like, oh my God, like what happened? But luckily I wasn't knocked out. I just quickly got up and then I realized like Camera was legit broke. I had an eyepiece over here and a lens over here. Damn. And, How do yeah. you pivot and keep keep recording? Or do you have another spare camera? Or um, no, I, I didn't do anything. I kind of just got on the intercom because each camera is connected by a cable. So all our all our cameras are connected to the truck. So, okay. You know, so oh, okay. everyone's always in contact. You know? So you hear you hear yeah. everybody. So everyone's quickly. Oh, are you all right? You know, Alejandro, are you okay? Okay. And I'm like, oh, my camera's broke. And they're like, all right, we'll send an engineer. So I just kind of sat there with, like I couldn't. I couldn't film. Yeah. The camera's broke. So I I just sat courtside and just watched the game for, nice. like, for <laughs> a, quite a, courtside a seat. Quite a few minutes. So and then there an was the discussion about, about cameramen on the court. Cameraman on the court. So mm-hmm. as I was talking to Pop, I said, Hey coach, uh, I'm there courtside under the Spurs bench. He's like, Yeah, yeah, I know. I was like, Well, I just want you to know, like, you know, I keep my distance. I'm not trying to cross the right. The, the, the I ain't one the, of them. The, the, the line, you know. Yeah. You know I, I, I want to. I want to make sure everything's I'm gonna safe. Be as professional I'm as possible. Be as prof- yeah, right. as professional as I can, uh, because I know I know you're looking for the replay. So one of the things is, mm-hmm. whenever something would happen, uh, the coaches have a little monitor on the side of their mm-hmm. uh, where they where they sit. And more than one occasion, I've seen the monitor from where I'm sitting, and I realize it's my angle. Oh, wow! So they can decide what they're going to watch courtside you know, right so that if something happens on the court they can quickly look at the inter- the replay yeah and decide oh well, what are we going to do yeah so they've been looking at my stuff for a long time right coach pop is oh, wow. always looking exactly. at that replay and so i told him yeah you know I, I'm, I'm just trying to you know he's like don't worry you keep doing uh, uh you're, you're doing a great job keep mm-hmm. doing what you're doing don't worry about all that other mess yeah you know because uh when something happens i want to see it on the replay he said yep because you're the you're the angle that he needs yeah. to see from and that then, yeah. angle. Maybe so, not the best entertainment angle, like, but the, the angle, angle that I need to see because the real stuff that's happening is right, right there. there. And so I was like, okay, thanks. He's like, all right, keep up the good keep keep up the good work, and kind of went on his way. And so yeah, there's been a few times like that where you know it's just 
you know, n- nothing, nothing real important is going on. Right. He happens to be coming by, and it's just like, oh hey, you know, how, how's it going? You know, yeah. this real. You know, he he's really invested in everybody there, and mm-hmm. you know, he he remembers the previous conversations we've had. And, wow. You know, even though like month, like seasons will go by. Yeah. From not talking to the guy, and yeah, he'll be like, "Oh, hey," you know. and you think I'm not important? He's not yeah. gonna oh, that stuff, but it, yeah, yeah. So it's a great it's a organization. Leader. Everybody, that, I mean, from the top down, bro. Uh, so um, really good leadership skills. When the script comes out for the NBA, do you get one? Yeah, like, can you tell us <laughs> like what's gonna happen next year? Is it automatic that Wemby's gonna win us a championship next year, or what are they saying? Because you know the script came out for the draft picks, right? And you had that. You knew um, the lottery. I've never seen an, an NBA <laughs> script. Oh. Uh, but when I used to work for w- <laughs> when I used to work for WW, uh, WWF, WWE <laughs> plenty of scripts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you used to work for WWE? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would see the scripts? Yeah, yeah, oh. for sure. Oh. Yeah, I, yeah. That's so, cool. So that was around uh, the time where I was like trying to get into the NBA but couldn't. But I tried to put my, get my foot in the door of the AT and T Center. You know, How so. ungrateful are you? You're at the <laughs> WWE, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> now, now yeah. forever. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I know. I mean, bro, those wow. those. Uh, He's wearing a WWE shirt right now. Oh yeah, we are. What those product. Those are big productions, brother. Like yeah, big time. Big, tons that's of what trucks. I'm saying. You you want like, tons of but trucks you want coming an NBA. in. NBA. That was yeah. Your I want it, but I, I I need to get my foot in the door. You and so out I, the resume. And- Great. Yeah. So I, I did a lot of I did a lot of concert things like that at AT and T Center, at Verizon Wireless yeah. Amphitheater, at Sunset Station. But you never found yourself getting caught up in the fact that, whoa, I'm at this. Great event. You're like, I got a job to do and I'm doing my job. Or yeah. uh, is there a lot of times where you get caught up in that? You can be honest. Be, no, be because it's live TV, you're always like, you're, you're always on it. On it. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, you're never like, lose, oh, what time is it? Or what am I supposed like, to, where am I supposed to? Or have, you, have you ever lost yourself in a game where you're like oh, recording yeah. and then you're just like. Or an event. Oh, yeah. Like the right. game just got intense and you're like, oh shit, I got a job to do. <laughs> Why was that cameraman <laughs> clapping? <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, Alejandro, we got the audio, and you're just yelling, Go Spurs, girl, the entire time. <laughs> it happens. You're human. We're human. Have you, has that ever happened? Um, mm. and if, if that'll I, cost you your job, you don't have to answer the no, question. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely expressive when I'm filming the game. So I'm, mm. you know, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying it, you know. So uh, I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to be proactive on what's happening and where we're no. going. Oh, yeah. And not be reactive on thinking oh, ahead. You, you have to yeah. think ahead. That's where that's that's the big difference. That's camera life. work. You have mm. to you you. If you're always trying to get the shot, you're gonna miss it every time. Right. So you have to you have to know where you're going. So I know you know. Uh, for instance, Memorial Day Miracle, right? Yes. All right. Th- this is a good story. So there's a uh, quite a few photos at the AT and T Center with, you know, Sean Elliott with three. Right. And, and, and the tip toe at the line. And there's a bunch of guys. Uh, uh, Tons of video guys courtside, like oh. stacked together. A lot of them side by side, all all filming the shot. Uh huh. Let's see images. Let's see if we can get that. Yeah, maybe. We, I think we need like a, a a reverse. Oh yeah, something like this. Right there. Uh, second one. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one of my friends is here, and so I think about this all the time. Uh, one of the guys who works in the control room. Uh, God bless him. He's all, he's a graphics guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name's Fred. Uh, but before Fred was in the control room, Fred was doing camera work over at the Alamo Dome. Mm-hmm. So uh, Sean Elliott goes, he gets the inbound, he immediately puts up the three pointer, he goes in, the pole place goes wild, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, here's this, you know, camera guy, camera guy, camera guy. Can we scoot over? It doesn't go over anymore. Or it does. There's it does. my buddy Fred with his hand with the ball up head? in the air. The ball guy? Cheering. Oh. <laughs> camera pointed this way somewhere. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> That's what we're talking yeah, about. Talking about. <laughs> so I see this all the time there and I'm like, don't be Fred. Don't be Fred. Don't be Fred. <laughs> Get the replay because they're going to show it on SportsCenter or they'll show it on Spurs.com. They're going to show it. You know, get the replay. You know, follow, follow the action. You're always following the action. Oh, uh, so yeah. Amazing. So in, in situations like this, you got to know, right. you know, if he if he hits it, where am I going? What's you know, what am I? Where's my reaction? Where's the emotion that I'm going to try to grab? You know, is wow. it the coach? Is it the bench? Is it the mm. crowd? Right. Uh, the shot's already taken. It's already yeah. hit. And so now you're I always mean, 
you're always thinking about that. You're always thinking, where am I going next? Where am I going next? And and you're you're saving the director because the director is in the room with right. all switch, these monitors. Switch over here. Oh, seven, five, uh, uh, six, give me that, uh, four. But if you can always just be selling and showing right. what he wants, he knows before, what to be looking for. He's taking. He's, he's taking. Like, hey, taking. Alejandro's gonna get this shot. Let me look at his five. Yeah, and so, so even before this happens, you know, there's like that timeout, and people are trying to get in position. To be honest, bro, I'm already like practicing, like the final shot. Like I'm already practicing. Oh, you're already practicing. I'm already practicing the plays. You know, there oh, there used to be a shit. point early on. Uh, maybe I'm a little rusty now, mm-hmm. but I used to know a lot of the plays. That's what I was gonna ask. Like, are there sometimes yeah, where oh, you yeah. could like this is yeah. what's gonna happen? Like, like Tony Romo, you know, Tony yeah, Romo yeah. will call those great plays. Point, before. Great point. So I would see, I would see, you know, the big three go on the court. Mm-hmm. I would look at Pop. Pop would give a four down, you know, a little oh. do of his tie. I'm like, okay, it's going to be. He don't do those plays anymore, It's going to go he? to Timmy. He's Timmy's going to. Uh, he still does four okay, down. Okay, what happens with four down? <laughs> <laughs> look it Is up. Is that a pick and roll? Or? <laughs> no, pick and roll, pick and roll. Okay. Uh, but now that I knew the plays, mm-hmm. I knew what was going to happen before mm. it happened. And so I'd be ready. I'd be working on my focus. I'd be working on my move, you know. I'd be, right. And then with my other eye, I'm like, okay, what's the bench doing, you know, is. Right. Do I need to get that shot? Do I need to get that shot? Yeah. Do I want to go that way? You That's know? amazing, bro. So, uh, it, so I mean, cool. and so you're on it the whole time. Like wow. the whole time the, the game's on, you're always like on the edge of your yeah. seat. What am I getting next? What am I getting next? Where am I going now? Tally, 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 tally. Wow. And then at the end of the game, bro, you're like super wired, you know. Yep. You can't go to sleep. And you, you get home <laughs> and, you know, there's no crowd. There's, there's no crowd. Yeah. There's it no, all shuts you know, off. you're ready for this blaring. <laughs> and yep. you're just like, wow, I just came away from the NBA finals and. It's crazy. Now I'm home again. And, you know, yeah. Got confetti in my hair. How do you do it when it's not a good um, ending? Like, let's say, um, nah. Like, what are you looking Point for? Four no, seconds. no, I mean, like, what do you mean? What are you looking for at that time? Oh, yeah. Like, whose reaction do you want when, mm. like, let's say Sean Elliott missed that shot? Who are you looking for? Like, what are you looking for? The crowd? Are you looking for the players? Right. We're let down as fans, right? You have a job to do still. Yeah. You still have to capture yeah. that story. Of, what are you capturing? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so a lot of times before the game, this is kind of the, the, the magic behind the, mm-hmm. the show, that the director, will, we will have, uh, you know, some, some storylines, so to mm-hmm. speak. You know, hey, we're going to… script. The script. The script. script. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, because hey. there's things going on, right? There's, there's Tim Duncan is arguing with Kobe or whatever, right? Let's, Somebody let's, has a contract thing going on. Yeah. Somebody has is coming back from a something. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So all these things you kind of, okay, you make note of. Right. And so, oh. as you're going into the game, it's a it's a brand new story. Right. This coach is having this thing with it, so you're always keeping an eye out. You're always kind of looking, 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 looking. So it, right. it, it, things are just moving so fast. Yeah. And so you you tried. I try to make sure I grab that emotion because yeah. that's what people are looking for. They're looking for mm-hmm. the emotion. And if, if that means that I'm gonna have to move my camera, add some motion to my camera, to right. Better sell that than than I will. Uh, mm. But you know. Yeah, because like he's in contract negotiations. He's not happy right now. Right now, dude. Pan over to him because he just messed up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it has and, to happen. And, and so you're also on the fly listening to the announcers as they're oh, talking. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah. So I have And like, the truck? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you have a director oh. talking on this ear going, you know, hey, uh, what about this? And uh, look over there. And then on this side, I have the announcers. You know, they're, uh, and what about this? And uh, look at that player right there. So you're trying to... Yeah. At that moment, where can I tell a better story? If Do they I go need, this way or yeah. this way? If they need you to change the angle, are they saying your name? Oh yeah, yeah. They'll like call you. to yeah. to know because they're you're hearing everything yeah, yeah. right mm-hmm. in here. But they they they're yeah. calling on you. Are they saying five? Yeah, five, yeah, 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 for sure. So the camera on the Spurs side is three. Three. So for the longest time, it, you know, three, three coach, you know, three react, you know, got three, you. Oh, God. Three, three. Uh, David Robinson, because I know where he's sitting. This you know, is uh, great. Or or uh, Peter Hope, you know, like now nice. I know who is it now. Peter Holt still. still Peter it's still Holt. Peter Holt? Uh, his, he's a major. Or I mean, uh, no, no, his, no, his, his, son. Step his down. son. His son. Yeah, his son did the lottery ball. Who's yeah. the GM? Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh. GM's Brian Wright. Uh, did you hear about that? Like, they they drew it three times for the Spurs. They had to redraw. What? Because, so you haven't heard the story about this. So the thing was, was that something happened with the, um, with um because of the record of the Rockets and the Spurs. They had to do a coin toss, oh, that's right? right? The Spurs lost the coin toss, so they fell to this certain place, right? If, if or they got this certain set of numbers, Correct. right? And if you hit this certain set of numbers, it's on you, right? If the law, if the balls hit that number, it's the Spurs, right? If the Spurs would have won the coin toss, they would have got 
the the rockets okay. combination of numbers. So, but what happens is if if the lottery balls draw your set of numbers and um, they do it multiple times, like you like I don't know, some, if it happens multiple times, they have to withdraw. They forget about the whole order. They redraw. So it happened, and the Spurs came up twice. So they're like, okay, redraw. But the Spurs were first place, right? They said redraw, and then it happened again. And they said, oh, Spurs happened again. They got double double picked. Redraw. Redraw. But they were first. Three times in a row, the Spurs fucking got drawn wow. first place for the lottery tick for the lottery pick. And it's like there's That's no amazing. denying it. The people are saying that it's fixed, but how? I mean, unless there's somebody fixing it to, to draw it three times straight. The law of averages doesn't say that happens very often. Bro, we believe in miracles here in San Antonio. Hundred percent, and God. Bro, oh, I, I, <laughs> so I had to sit. I, when I was working. Uh, I was working a meeting for the rodeo. I also do rodeo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do do a lot of. Uh, we just assume rodeo. you do all camera work in San Antonio. I do. <laughs> I do. That's so I, great. I filmed all over this city, uh, buildings and venues. Uh, but yeah, I was at, I was filming the rodeo, so I had my cowboy hat on, boots, you know, buckle. And then I got the message, and I was like, Thank you. "Oh man, the Spurs!" Like I had to sit down. I was like, <laughs> I was I was like going through all these memories of like when we got Timmy and like mm-hmm. how much how much Timmy, the big three, the Spurs have been such a part of my career, yeah, of my success, right? Uh, of all, if you count up all the playoffs and finals, and I, I mean, those are paychecks, bro. Those yes. are. Those are big time. Like, and that's a resurgence of that, right? Time. And how many people have, like the core of people within the organization have stayed there through these few years of, of um, rebuild? There's a lot of turnaround, I'll tell you that. There's a lot like, of turnover. Like, but yeah, you're, you've been but, there and you're still yeah. there, right? That's the reward there, right? Is like you yeah. powered through. I, have a, I definitely have a lot of institutional knowledge there. Mm. Uh, and that's allowed me to bounce around. So after we did the global games and, and we won the championship, I, I was able to. They, they offered me a chance to become full time. Mm-hmm. They created a, a creative department, something I've been waiting for wow. like all these years, just to like be a part of that. Because back in the day, they would, they would, uh, what do you call it? They would trade services. So you know, was, this company would get. Right. Seats they were outsourced. And outsourced. Everything was outsourced. So mm-hmm. you know, th- that company had that box, and you know, that company does commercials, this and that. Yeah. But finally, they brought it in. Centralize it. And they brought in a few producers and they asked me at the beginning, the, the, the day we were getting rings, they were handing out rings. Uh, I got my championship ring from the 2014 you, season. You didn't ring it? I didn't. I did, <laughs> I did think about it. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're here though. I did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we got the ring That's and I was great. like, man, what a night. This is a great opening night. Got a ring. And then my buddy who was one of the producers said, hey, man. We want to hire you full time. We're starting this creative department, and we're just going to do all the promos and videos and commercials. And I was just like, "Yeah, bro, like I'm in." And yeah, that started a, a, a three year full time uh, adventure with the Spurs. Mm-hmm. Where I, I thought I was already working a lot, but my goodness, right. bro, I was all over that place. Wow. I mean, we were working on all the franchises, you know. So going full time, becoming a producer, mm-hmm. we would have creative meetings Austin. for all the franchises. Yeah, yeah, Austin. We would have them for Rampage Stars. The silver and black give back, uh, the Spurs, and wow. my God, man, it was a, such a blast, bro. Just to, hey, uh, we have the playoffs coming up. All right, let's have a meeting. Great, so we have a meeting, and uh, let's come up with some themes, and you know, what celebrities could we put in? And uh, one one particular playoffs, me and my uh, me and my good friend, his name's Eric. He's another producer there. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and him ended up winning quite a few Emmys together. Wow. Uh, yeah, we were. We Did were, you have to buy the Emmy? Yeah, that's a good question. Did you have to buy the trophy? Like the uh, no, because uh, the Spurs, the Spurs covered it for us. They covered it for you. That's wow. great. Wow. Chip White yeah. had to buy yeah. his. God bless Emmy. the Spurs for <laughs> Jeopardy didn't um, cover his. Uh, believing in us, yeah, uh, p- putting up the money to to enter our work, and then so you have your ha- Emmy at home. I have two, uh, yeah. You didn't bring it. I did not. <laughs> I also I did also think about it, but yeah. but you had to feel his offers. You didn't even know if we were real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. these dudes I'm gonna take my rings and my Emmys. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I wouldn't have fucking brought that yeah. shit either. But that's incredible that you that you, those accomplishments exist for you, man. Yeah, but but it it was all collaboration. Yeah, because of teamwork. Because yes. oh, I I bring up Eric because again we we want to get better every day and we want to push right. each other. So a lot of times, and I would do it to him too. You know he. We would do a video and then he'd say, hey, man, check this out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'd all look at it and I'd be like. It could be better. Yeah. Is it, you know, 
is it Emmy worthy though? Right. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. What about yeah. So we would mess with it. And then he would do the same to me. I'd, yeah. I'd come back with it. I'd be working on something for a good week, whatever. That I, oh, here, this is going to It's the beauty of it. Mm, is that Emmy worthy though? I'm like, ah, oh, okay. uh, and so, yeah, together we made each other, each other better and we got to do so many campaigns and, and, and commercials. And Eric what? Uh, Eric Cantu. He's, Eric not, Cantu. he's now uh, with the fire department. He's doing really? video stuff. Oh, awesome. video stuff with the fire department? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it is a, the Spurs is a revolving door, but I mean, if you can get in there mm-hmm. and, you can, super machine. and you can knock out some amazing, I mean, you have the ability to knock out some amazing yeah. quality work while you're there. I do. And all those, all, all my friends there, uh, all my coworkers, they've all, you know, used the Spurs as a stepping stone. They've gone on to the Astros, the Interesting. Uh, the uh, Chargers, uh, mm-hmm. they've gone to the Knicks. The Astros, another Clippers. great organization. Like, I, incredible. They cheat, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, they don't cheat. I, they're my favorite baseball team. What about if there was an NFL <laughs> team here? Would you, would you think about leaving the Spurs? Uh, I don't think I would have to leave. I think. Oh I no, because those seasons don't. Yeah, yeah, they don't. I mean, no, I've, yeah. I've done the. What yeah, was it? He still I did. Does. A, we did arena football. I did that. That's true. Oh, you did that yeah, one. Yeah, we did the what, XFL. The, uh, the, um, all the Amer- Commanders. All American football was that? All American. The American Football League. That one did that one. That yeah. was man. It felt like that was the. T- that was, was gonna. Like, I thought that one was gonna make. It. Yeah. And then the whole organization went under. The whole league went yeah. under. But it was because they were not using it to build a league. They were building it uh, to build a sports betting app. Yeah, yeah. It was all Silicon Valley people who didn't know much yeah. about football. They hired some certain people to get a football league together. They didn't even finish were, the season. They didn't because they were just trying to I thought uh, COVID pilot. stopped it. Huh? I thought COVID stopped it. Oh, I thought you said Kobe. I was like, what? No, what? I thought it was he could have stopped. Oh, no, but COVID. COVID. No, COVID it was before stop. COVID. Uh, it was before what about COVID. XFL? I think. Uh, I didn't get any. I didn't get any of that this year. Oh, to be no? honest. But then again, I was traveling and. Overseas. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask too. Like, um, are you able to do anything while the NBA season's going on? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean. Again, I've I've been with them for so long and yeah. and and worked in all these different uh, departments. Yeah, hey, you just call in sick. Yeah, I know. I just I just to be honest, I just I just cover myself, <clears throat> cover cover with somebody who's, you know, as reliable as good, who can take those days. You know, because sometimes you know if if I <coughs> like Ukraine, bro, I went to Ukraine for like twenty days, twenty two days. Really? Was it scary? You look pretty safe for a bit there. Yeah. Um, for as much as I saw. I was like, okay, cool. strange station. Everything, everything looks peaceful there. Uh, I, I was, I wasn't scared, but I think I'm. I think when I'm away from it, it's more scary than when you're there. Like right. in retrospect, so you're looking back, back and you're like, oh yeah, shit, these I, shit, those water shells are coming. Yeah, down. I try not to think about that because when you're Sorry. there, you're you're. Fu- <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Stop. Let's get into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. It, it has so been, you were in danger. Been, oh no, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I was. Dri- we were driving into cities that were being bombed as being we speak. That, that were on fire. You were in you know, a war air, raid si- air, air raid sirens were going off. Uh, wow. You know, drones were in the sky. Uh, Russian jets were flying overhead. Like mm-hmm. no, we were we were in range. We were you know. You target. knew you were going into that. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. did. I mean, I, did you I, know it was going to be to that degree? Or did you thought like no, no, I didn't keep think, us out of of the bad bad areas. No, but I I went prepared thinking that I would go on. So I took bulletproof vests. Mm-hmm. I, I put uh, I, I took tourniquets. I took a lot of things that were needed on there on the front line supplies, and uh, I went and you know I went a little further and you know those doors started to open to help more people and I mm-hmm. kept going until there was no more. Fr- you couldn't go any further. I was on the front line. And, you know, we were in convoys of tanks and, you know, we were with soldiers and, you know, praying with them and, and being, you know, a light in the darkness with them. Mm-hmm. And man, it was phenomenal. I, I, it's, wow. it's just, I, I definitely left a piece of my heart there. Right. Like, it's just, you know, you're, it's kind of bittersweet when you leave a place like that, you know, and I guess I, I'm sure I have some, some level of PTSD of some sort. Sure. I mean, uh, I, you can see it. In, in your reaction and, and you know, when, when we got into the subject, you know, and, and, and how could you not, right? Yeah, but the fruit that I've been able to see, you yes. know, the people we've been able to help and, and the supply, supplies that have gone out. And the reinforcement of your faith. Oh, big time. I mean, to be honest, I went, I went, there, I went there with no plan. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I got a call straight up. A friend of mine who I had done some video work with, a different evangelist, um, he gave me a call and said, hey, you know, if you come with me, you know, I'll purchase your ticket. 
He's like, but I don't know what we'll do. I don't know what we'll film. Mm. He's like, we just want to, I just want to go serve. Just want to help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, we're going to serve first. And if you want to do that, let's go. So I was like, okay, great. So, uh, you know, not. I, I was work, the original, was it 20 days, the I original work, I work best when I don't have like a structured right. thing. Somebody yeah. says, you, you go, you do, do you. your thing. You go make something. So I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And I think we originally were going to be there for just a week. Mm. But he got tied up uh, with a. A, a government meeting with his, uh, he just got married. So, Oh, he's in the CIA? Uh, he's a former Marine. Nice. I do uh, Medic. <laughs> uh, very kidding. cool guy. He travels ar- around the world. Uh, I did wow. a video with him in DC when mm-hmm. uh, the inauguration happened. He went to go preach at the inauguration. Really? He straight up went right up to the Capitol and like pre- <laughs> preached and like we got... We had uh, January bomb squad. 6th? Yeah, yeah. What? No, not January 6th. Oh, the, the, the inauguration. The inauguration, my bad. Yeah, we had we had bomb squad come <laughs> out and all this craziness happened just because the homeboy went to go preach for the nation. He went to- for- really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> preach for forgiveness and for uh, redemption and mm-hmm. atonement. And uh, yeah, things got out of hand. And I made a documentary out of that. You did? Uh, where does where is all of your work? Oh, it's, well, it's or is it, it everywhere? Yeah, it's everywhere because most of the videos I'm doing, I'm I'm doing for those prospective ministries or groups. Right. And so I, I knock out a video and then they, mm-hmm. they post it on their You don't centralize everything platform. you've done. No, I, I, I've just never been in, in a position to do that. It's not all about you for you. No. I mean, a lot of people say the same for all the Spurs stuff. Oh, do you have all your Spurs? I'm like, right. I, I mean, I have a few things, but, yeah. but it's, know, there, all, right? it's there, you know. So the video that I did with that guy, we went to the Capitol. Uh, we did, I did a documentary. It's on his, you know, YouTube and, it has it has over a million views already. There are so many comments, thousands of comments, and what is it called? He's the guy. Uh, that guy is uh, Torch of Christ Ministries. Torch of Christ Ministries. And Torch then, of Christ um, Ministries. And Torch. <laughs> Torture. Oh my God! Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Blair. Yeah, Philip Blair is the guy's name. My uh, bad. So, um, and then inauguration, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's in there. It should be in there somewhere. It, that that documentary was wild. Really? We, uh, uh, they thought we were terrorists. Uh, not the first time I've. They thought y'all they, were. That's not the first time somebody the, thought yeah, you were terrorists. Yeah, yeah. In in Nairobi, in Kenya, uh-huh. uh, some years back, uh, they thought I was a terrorist, and like, I got kidnapped in broad daylight. You got kidnapped? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see this first. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's go. Uh, <laughs> Bro, I got kidnapped. kidnapped. Go go. Keep scrolling. We'll, start, we'll find uh, like Washington or the Capitol or something. Thank you for sharing these stories with us. Uh, but while she's looking at that, I can I can tell you about uh, Kenya. So it's our it's my first time, uh, not my it's my second time in Kenya, and I'm downtown in uh, their main capital, Nairobi. Mm-hmm. A very beautiful city, very modern t- skyscrapers. You know, oh, all, really? all this cool African architecture. Yeah. So I'm filming all this stuff because I think it's really cool, and I I know a lot of people stateside just haven't seen that type of stuff. They before. wouldn't even think they Kenya yeah, and has all this buildings. modern and yeah. architecture and art. I wouldn't. And which one? Is so it? this would be. I'm in like two years ago. When was the inauguration? <laughs> which inauguration are we talking? Biden yeah, or Joe Biden? Yeah, just the other day. Oh. Right, the other day. The other so, day, <laughs> yeah, just like three years so ago. So it's our first. It's our first day in Kenya, and we have. Uh, another evangelist sh- showing up, mm-hmm. and there, boom, Where? right there, the uh, so right, there. right there. Mm-hmm. All right, pause it. All right, that uh, audio. <laughs> yeah, so it says here, God sent us on a mission to the capital to preach a message before the nation. Soon, I found myself surrounded by police and facing potential death merely for preaching and sad class yeah. messages. Oh, so yeah. What so this guy it? calls me and he says, "Hey, bro, I've seen you online. Uh-huh. Come meet us. We're gonna go film." And uh, I'm not gonna say I'm not a little nervous. You wanna you wanna set it up? You wanna pause it? We set it up. To come to pause it real quick. So he calls you. Yeah, call, uh, we're, I know I'm on social media, right? Uh-huh. So he's seen some of my travels. I've seen some of his travels. Right. Uh, and his thing is, he he he'll. Uh, go pray for whatever nation he's at. So he'll put, he'll throw on a sackcloth, yeah, and then throw on ashes. Like it's like I'm talking about Old Testament stuff, where you're just like you're the worst of the worst. You, you've put on this really uncomfortable thing. You're right. putting on burnt ashes, and, yeah. and you're 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 praying. You're you're 
uh, you're you're prophesying, you're uh-huh. uh, praying for forgiveness. Right. And so he goes to, especially during lockdown, he went like all over the, all these empty places and like preached. And preached. And, and so, so nobody has context to what he's doing. They just see the guy with guy. Just out, yeah, exactly. So Eeks. he calls me up and says, hey, like, like, like four days before the inauguration, mm-hmm. he calls me. Hey, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go preach at the, you know, inauguration. Mm-hmm. You know, bring a camera. Come, come with me. I'm inviting, you know, I'm just putting it on social. Right. So I, I, I've never met the guy. I didn't know his team. I didn't, but I've traveled. I've been right. with preachers before. So I was like, okay, I'm there. You know, yeah. It wasn't the first time somebody calls me last minute to go. Right. So we go, we fly over and I meet him. I meet some other members of the team. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we just start walking, bro. It was so weird. Like wow. DC was like, uh, it was just after January 6th. So the whole place oh. was like barricaded and, and blocked off and, and boarded up. So it was like a ghost town. Oh no. Had you been to DC before? Yeah, I've been to DC before, oh, but man. this was so it's weird. Majestic, man. Yeah, so different, so weird. And we so we start walking around and you can you can play it and, and we start like praying for Washington, military and police yeah, guys. The inauguration of Joe Biden. But it was tense, bro. Wow. Tense. I think all of us here had Felt it very strongly pressed upon our heart that we were going to preach the gospel, but I had a special mission to preach in sackcloth, just as I have before, uh, and to proclaim Jesus and repentance to the nation. Repent, United States of America! I've never done something like this before. So Jesus Christ is coming soon. He just went for it, and this and like this. Look at what the hand of the Lord hath brought. Were you kind of mind blown? I was, because <laughs> this was this wasn't my we normal, you know, right. guy on the stage or a, yeah. a set Jesus thing. Is this is not the Memorial Day home. miracle. No, we we Seek were just Lord okay. We were walking, found, and he said, "Call upon him while he is near." We're gonna do it right here. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let us turn to the Lord, and He will have mercy. And, and the president God rolls by. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that crazy? King of glory. Of all the spots, times, passion, yeah. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It will lift you up and give you life. Your government will not save you, my friends. Jesus Christ brings an eternal kingdom. Yeah, he just happened to roll on through. He <laughs> brings a kingdom that's not of this world. There is only one name under heaven given unto men, whereby we can be saved. Jesus the way, the truth, and the life. Ain't that something? That's incredible. For the just, of God has no, come just you. raw, bro. Just, we're going to go for it. And he randomly said, This is a yeah, spot? Yeah, yeah exactly friends, like that. Our government has and the whole gone motorcade into came corruption. through. We have worshiped in darkness, and Jesus wants to bring us into And so the all this is but we as a country must barricaded. Humble ourselves before God so he can live Security us everywhere. Up. Did it anybody stop you? government we're under, Trump. Biden, they will not save you. Jesus is the one who saves. Jesus is the one who heals. Jesus is the one who so delivers. I'll, what about Robert he is Kennedy? The great position. So, he is the great I am. So all this is, is going on, Lord, and I'm like, okay, is only one name this is pretty wild. That will give you the life that you are looking for. So I, I, I start to work with him and his crew, and I'm telling all the other guys, like, well, hey, you take this camera, you do this, you do that. Mm-hmm. And so let, we can we can, uh, we can go for, forward a little bit. Yeah, let's yeah. go quite a bit. Uh, it looks like there's chapters here. So let's keep going more over here. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So right there, right there. Back, back, so let's back. go somewhere over here. Right there. Right there. A little more and more, more. A little farther back. Yeah, this is where it gets kind of wild. So that was the day prior, right? Okay. So boom, we see the motorcade. And yep. then... Okay, we're going to go right up to the fence. So I put on my sack. Oh, the fence of the Got White House? Or the, the inauguration? The, the inauguration, the Capitol. Okay. Capitol. They, they built it, you know, them, National yeah. Guard. Like, we're going to go right up. And then this girl shows up. She comes from, she drives from far. Huh? He put on she comes to bring, with sackcloth. She yeah. brings ashes. He started huh? putting the, the ashes, you know, on his head. And, and we get to right in front of the, so the Capitol's right here. It was blowing on me. And it just. And they just throw on these ashes. Such a powerful moment, continuing to be more and more powerful is like building up. You put on a sackcloth. And there's all this international press around us from all over. Sitting there, just kind of meditating. Whose ashes are they? She 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 went and put she she burned some barbecue. uh, She burnt wood and prepared them and brought them. Oh, I hate that. So she wasn't attached to him. No, she just saw saw that he had posted and she just showed up. 
And so all of a sudden we had this small little team form just right. randomly, people showing up. The, the fence. There's the Capitol. And look at these guys. Immediately surrounded by oh, Capitol Police, uh, secret agents, I don't even know, police officers, uh, military. I just And from here, bro, it just I got, got more tents and more tents. Immediately we had several police officers tell me, don't move. Right there. Holy smokes. Right there, it got real? Okay. Big time, bro. Right there. A, this is right there. Don't He's nervous in. now. Don't yeah. Don't do anything. Don't move. And I didn't know. I was like. We're just preaching the gospel. Stay there. Okay. Don't move. Are you the film? Are you yeah, filming yeah, this? Yeah. You're the guy behind yeah. the camera right now? <sighs> so I had, I had like three guys that I just met. Yeah. And so I was like, you take this camera. I'll take this camera. So that's me there. Oh, that's you. There's another guy the, there. Um, the police or the military, I don't know. People with guns. Guns are drawn. Um, started surrounding us. They started telling everyone to get back. They started pushing everyone that was around us, um, including, you know, members of our team. And bro, I didn't know what to do. I was like, like a block. block just keep do, do, I, do, I, do I stay? Do I go? Do I, the area. do I claim homeboy? Brother Phillip. Right. <laughs> you know. I just met him. Like, I don't know this guy. Yeah. Do I say I'm with him? It started getting very uh, scary. Big time, bro. My oh flesh my. was already struggling with the idea of doing sackcloth and ashes. And then in that moment, it was just, boom, you know, all of this. Um, and they bring more spiritual hostility. Security. They, more guys they with moved, guns come out. Um, the troops that were around the area back. Um, I didn't know what was going on, but I just I just kept praying. I kept my hands up. Um, I started crying, and it, it wasn't just fear that was making me cry. But I was, you know, I was already look at all of the media there. State of mind. These um, are people from all over the world. Regards to sin oh. and repentance and just. And this guy just randomly, homeboy, <laughs> homeboy Vato just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> His name's Jorge, God. and he just hey on his I, iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Pivotal guy, dude. Wow. Pivotal. Really. Be to the story? Joyful. Yeah. Oh, man. This like, time of mourning. and it, it just all happens. So Do we fast. need to go up? Uh, I think we're going to roll right into it. Okay. And I think moving forward, we're going to have dark days. So And I'm the fact that all praying. these people came together. Uh -huh. um, Brother Philip started preaching. To help Philip to there encourage one, him to, right, was one to brother, spread his message. I don't know his name. <laughs> um, we, just, we had just met him. God is love. His name was Jorge. And for some reason, um, you know, they're pushing everyone else away. They allowed him to stay. Then they hoard him. Yeah, like he's CIA. Him. And you know, I, I said I'm scared. Oh, and he was like, "Don't worry, sister. You know, God's here with us." What? He was preaching. the calming Keep voice. Keep praying. And I, I really feel like wow, bro. God allowed him to stay there to encourage both me and Brother Philip in that. And moment. they went for it, dude. Because they were, I they were afraid. You can see. Him. Yeah. And he stayed calm. Jorge, we need Today you on the podcast. Today is salvation. Preach, bro. Preach. Keep going. He's like, don't worry about it. Preach. All these soldiers, dude. Wow. Don't quit, bro. Oh, behind the fence. FBI. Go for it, bro. And there's Go people pushing us back. You hear them. Move, bro, move, move. They cleared, Just do it. they cleared like two, three Now's boxes. Now's the time, brother. <laughs> but they let y'all stay. They let us yes. stay. They let him preach. We call upon the name of Jesus. And they went for it. He, he, they Did they him. ever take him in? Once he stopped preaching, he gives his message. Yeah. And like, yes. That security came. They gave. Yeah. They, they Keep the photo. background music. It's it took so photo. They, they took photos happened. of us all. I didn't know if we were. They all knew we were with them. We were gonna get arrested. Then they but were. They yeah. Did, who are you? Who are you? What, why is he here? What are y'all doing? To proclaim nope. this and message that God had put in our Yeah, dude. It was. Oh, they think this guy has a bomb on him. They like get away from him. Yeah. In the Bible, it talks about sackcloth and ashes. Sir, back up. Back up. Give us some room. Back up. They think he has a bomb on him. Yeah. Or, or you know, vest with a vest, a bomb vest. The yeah. Area. He knows he's a I former military guy. They yeah. A block. So he knows. They cleared it back another block. So two blocks of clearance. And we had this huge... Ordeal and eventually he says, <laughs> I think everybody thought I was there with a bomb. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, done preaching. Vest. I've said what right. I'm going to say. Yeah. yeah. And they made him so get down and they sent somebody up to check him. They checked all of us. 
And, you know, we weren't breaking any laws. You know, we have our rights to, to free speech. Right. But, bro, they gave us... They, they, they gave us a lot of a lot of hell for being there. All, each one of those military people were on top of us. Who Good. And what and why and this. <laughs> but part of it is good, right? No, absolutely. Yeah, like, but mind you, but we had gosh. to go through a few checkpoints to even get there. So it's not like we were just right. randos, bro. That is true, too. Yeah, we weren't just randos. Like, we, there was definitely spots to get there. But when we got right. there, uh, late, later, there's a there's quite a bit of interaction between the security and our guys. Mm -hmm. And you can see how, like, they're just coming at it from, a, like, you're talking to us, but we don't want to hear you. Like, right. what's happening? And the yeah. guy's trying to explain. Get to the bottom of it. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, no. Don't, don't tell us. All that. Yeah. <laughs> None of that scripture stuff. Like, you what don't are have you a doing sack here? on you. Yeah. Get the guy with the sack. So what was uh, scarier, Ukraine or that situation? Because yeah. Jesus. That was bro. intense. Did Ukraine have that background music? Because <laughs> Jesus Christ, I was starting to sweat. Yeah. This, this, uh, I, this was a, definitely one of the first times I had snipers on me. You know, I, well, that's something I wasn't expecting. And we didn't get told that until. The person that came and, and sort of diffused everything said, uh -huh. oh, yeah, we had a few of them on you guys. And you don't have any military background at all, right? No, or? no. I've, I've definitely done some, you know, military training on my own. But no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I haven't <laughs> been deployed anywhere. Military uh, training for media? Because you go, you take yourself and you oh, into these. Yeah, yeah, zones. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've done, you know, like tr trauma stuff. Yeah. And, Tourniquets. And weapon stuff. And, you know, just little things. Not. You know, I have friends who are who are in the service. Uh, I wanted to go in the service when I was younger because yeah. I saw in the pamphlet uh, there's like a soldier guy with. You know, it's like all the guys with guns, and then yeah. there's like the guy with the camera. <laughs> the camera. And I was like, You're "That's so what I want. That's so interesting. I want to be that guy." And then you know, I, I I let them take me to lunch. You know, those recruiters that take you to lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I let each one of them they take me to, me to lunch. Dinner, yeah. but... uh, Navy, Air Force, Army. I got my my meals worth. Uh, <laughs> but they couldn't promise you, bro. They couldn't. No, well, you know, it's a. We can't promise you yeah, that you're gonna yeah, end that up, you're being, gonna end up uh, being that thing. Photographer. Like, but that's what I want to do. So either this is happening or not. Yeah, you know, no, you're gonna a, shoot. Oh, you're senior, definitely gonna shoot. But we don't know if it's footage <laughs> or bullets. You know, you can put in for it, but you won't get it. So that's why I didn't. I didn't go there. Damn. Way. But who would have? You know, all these years later, there I am in a war zone with a camera. So can we circle back to the kidnapping? Please. Oh, <laughs> no Thank shit, you so right? much. <laughs> That's the best question you've ever asked on our podcast. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah. So, and it was a prepped question already. That's true. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. So let's rewind. We're in Kenya. I'm mm -hmm. in Nairobi. Right. Uh, my second time in this country. I think. Okay. I, I've been here before. Yeah. It's not my first rodeo. I know. I know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And so we go to get some coffee in the morning. One of our evangelists came in late at night. So he wanted some real coffee. He didn't want instant coffee. Mm -hmm. So we walk down. We walk through the main park of Nairobi. Very beautiful. Like I said earlier, I'm filming buildings to show the architecture because I know I'm going to use this B-roll later. Yeah. Uh, we get some coffee, a little breakfast. And then I step out onto the uh, sidewalk to get more of like architecture. Well, I saw you buying sugar cane and watching your back oh, while you were a, eating it. Uh, yeah, that was... yeah. I've, yeah. I've learned some things. That was so, Tuesday. Yeah, right? Uh, so Tuesday in Kenya. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, maybe we could even call up the uh, the. What's the market? The trailer. The Holy Spirit woke me up one day and he said, go. And I didn't know where I was going. I just knew that I had to go somewhere. We're really excited about what Pastor's going to do over there. And it's like we're going with him. This is a word that comes right from the villages here in India. We're talking about being a gift, being used by God, being sent by God to change the world. Thank you, Jesus. You know, what we do as evangelists is not just another day at the office. You're awake in one place, sleep in another. It's crazy. While all those things, yeah, definitely take the toll on your body, it can't even compare to the elation that you feel once your feet touch ground on a place where your mission is about to happen. They were saying, you know, you guys might be terrorists. And we go to the police station, we're sitting there, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. We don't know what's going to happen. Are we going to be fined? Do we need a permit? What's the deal? Raise your hand if you want to receive Jesus. Yes, 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 yes,
And so, yeah, I'm just, I'm there on the sidewalk. And then some guy comes up to me who's playing just regular clothes. And he's like, hey, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? What, mm-hmm. Why are you filming? What are you, what are you here for? Like all these questions. I'm mm-hmm. like, bro, like I'm here with the church, you know, leave me alone. I have permission. You know, I'm mm-hmm. all good. And then I kind of shake him and I, I walk away. And then some other guys come up to me and they like surround me. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm right. I'm standing just right outside one of these little stores here. So, I mean, just, you know, from here to there. Mm-hmm. And they surround me and they said, what are you doing? You don't have permission to be here. What are you doing with that camera? And I was like, um, I, I said again, I'm with the church. I'm with such and such. This mm-hmm. is where I'm here. Mm-hmm. And they said, oh, well, we're the police. So you're going to have to come with us. I was like, the what? The police. You, you don't know, look like the police. You don't look like no police. You just yeah. look like some regular guys just on the side of the road, you know. And one guy pulls, they, they have these like uh, tunics, right? So he pulls up his tunic and he has this like knife, like an Arabic blade. It's kind of mm-hmm. curved. Has some jewels on it on the, on the sheath. <laughs> Arabian knife. <laughs> he's just like that, Aladdin. Uh, he's like, we're the police. And I'm like, bro, having a knife doesn't make you. Right. And so just as it happens, uh, the preachers I'm there with, they pop out of the, the cafe. Mm-hmm. And they see me surrounded by these guys. So then they jump in. They're like, who are you? What, what are you doing here? And, you know, and they're like, oh, are, are, is he with you guys? And they're like, yeah, he's with us. And they said, we're taking you all in. Oh, and I'm like, oh, my God, what do you mean? So they're like, we're, we're, ta- we're, taking, you to the, we're taking you to the jail. Oh, no. So it's, they don't bring a car, bro. Or they don't bring mm-hmm. a bus, a truck. Bro, we walked, we walked blocks and bro. blocks to in Amin the morning. Ali. It's like 8 in the morning. The sun's just coming out. It's blasting hot. We're all sweating and we like we cross a highway, we go blocks and blocks, finally make it to the jail. And they lock us up, bro. They take oh, away our there our, was a jail. Yeah, there was a jail, like oh, a shit. central, you know, yeah. police station jail. So mm-hmm. they put us in jail, they take away your stuff, they took my camera and all that. And we're locked up in the room. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, dang, I just got the preachers arrested on my first day. <laughs> <laughs> and we have an event tonight. Like that's our oh first event night. Like that God, night. We, we, we were having a big the event zebras. at the uh, yeah. look up, look up um, Nairobi slum Kibera. Oh man, she can't spell like that, bro. <laughs> I know. Just start with Kibera. the K. You'll get it. There you go. <laughs> so... Kibera is one of the largest, if not the largest slum in all of Africa. It's a very big place. A lot of like the poorest of the poor live here. And so, yeah, it's a a big old place. And so we were having uh, a ministry event in this uh, slum. And it was happening that first night. And I got us arrested. So we're at the, we're in this jail and nobody knows we're there. Like we're like, we, we made a few calls before we got in and like, wasn't reaching anybody. Yeah. And so. We're sitting there in the jail and I'm just, you know, I'm not scared, but I'm just like, oh man, like, I haven't even like started making the movie yet. And here I am like <laughs> locked up. And you so th- you thought it was going to derail everything, right? Oh, I, 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 dude, I thought from the get go, I was like, okay, well, this is that, like, they're not going to trust me. Like, you know, like, how am I going to rebound from this? You know, and it's a day one. And so, we're, yeah, so it's a, it's a very impoverished place there in, in Nairobi that we were at, the area that we were in. And nobody knew we were there. And one hour turned into two, turned into four, turned into five, turned into six. And we're just there, bro. And I'm like looking out the window, the, you know, the, I'm looking through the bars of the guys who arrested us. And they're like going through our stuff. They're looking through my camera, like looking through my passport. And I'm like, man, these guys are taking tea outside, just chilling. Yeah. And meanwhile, we're locked up, you know, with no, like, we haven't seen nobody. We haven't talked to anybody. Why, why are we here? How long are we going to be here? And yeah, I was just try, trying to be so, calm, just trying to be like, okay, you know, be positive. Were they uh, real cops though? Like, or were they yeah, like- they were cops? So by the time we got to the station, one guy like had some sort of ID that said like, oh, police. okay, but they brought us there. And there's another cartels up. like that in Mexico. And you pull oh. out a camera, they go, they'll take your camera from you. Yeah. And they'll make you delete everything that's in your... Yeah, it sounds like Ukraine. Oh, they do that at comedy yeah. clubs. It's Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> they do do that in comedy clubs. Teams are going to do that to, do that to uh, us when we come in. It's a Charlie Murphy okay, show. Okay, okay. Well, I don't want to deviate from the story, but yeah. my trick for that is to use a dummy phone. Mm. So uh, one of the last days I was in Ukraine, um, one guy came up. He was also plain clothes, and he wanted me to delete... Like, Open up the folder, go to the delete folder, delete, right. delete. And yeah. as he was delete, delete, delete. talking to me, 
he was talking to my translator and I just did a quick switcheroo and I took oh, my dummy phone. Oh, nice. And so by the time he looked back, you know, it was still an iPhone. Right. And I called but up the thing. Nothing there. I called up the, and I deleted it. And he's like, okay, we're going your way. Oh. But had he had had my real phone, he would have deleted right. like all of, really all of my stuff. I probably wouldn't have been able to make a movie had I not done that. So in dummy that, phone. In, that, in those hours that you were there in, in the jail. Yeah. I mean, and, did you feel like I'm, I messed up? Like I shouldn't be here? Or did you feel, did you feel some sense of the faith that everything's going to be okay? I did. Uh, even though we were in the jail, uh, the preachers I was with, they had no, you know, they weren't stressed. They weren't, mm -hmm. uh, you know, freaking really? out. So we had a real good sense of peace there um, in the jail, in the, in, the, in the cell. And not only that, but we started fellowshipping with the guys in the jail cell. So we kind of oh. turned it into a prison ministry. <laughs> like, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, well, we got locked up, but this is where we're We got a job so to do. We're not going to stop because yeah. we're in jail. And so we invited them all to the event that night. And... Uh, as we were talking it over, we heard a voice uh, through the bars, through the door. Somebody said, hey, hey. And we kind of looked. And it was a lady. Tim Duncan. Um, it was a lady. <laughs> it was a very beautiful lady. And mm -hmm. she said, hey, you don't belong in there. And we kind of did the like, us? Like that. And she's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You. In English? In English. She's like, you don't belong here. She's like, I'll be right back. And so she went. And I don't know where she went, but she went to the chief's room. Mm -hmm. the, the chief of police went in there. And within five minutes, they came it back. It took her five minutes? They opened the door for us. Oh, there was a line. Things uh, think, there's a thing called African time. And sometimes things take quite a bit of time. African time. <laughs> African time. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like, uh, like maybe. Uh, we call it CPT around here. There you go. <laughs> yeah, African time. That's crazy. So, so we end up being there for you know, quite a while. And this lady sees us. She talks to the chief. They let us out. And it turns out that she recognized us from uh, the photos that they were showing at the church. She went to the church oh, that we wow. were being hosted by. Wow. But she's also a detective there at the, at the police, police station. station. So she saw us. She recognized us from the photo. She went. She got us out. Uh, we talked to the police chief. We invited the guards to the crusade that night at the slum. Yeah. And the police station sent us an Uber. Do you think that's coincidence? Nah. No. That was a, a miracle Wait. that we got out of the Miracle. Miracle. Big time. Wow. Some other people, they just disappear. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, going to the places that you go to, that's... Making it out of there and coming back is a fucking miracle. But you feel peace uh, <laughs> I, most absolutely. of the time you're going there. You don't oh. feel apprehensive. I shouldn't be doing this for the most part, the larger part of you. No, I uh, I do remember driving to the front line and like hearing all those bombs falling. Right. And that was definitely a sense of uh, oh, anxiousness. Uh, yeah. Because you're like, what's going to happen? Like, mm -hmm. don't know, you know. Yeah. We're, we're, walk we're going straight into it, mm -hmm. right? Did you at least have a gun on you? No. No, I wouldn't need a strap on me, bro. But you look at, you know, I, I think that you... It's a different kind of war. It's, it's, it's not so much you're going to... It's yeah, a targeted... It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot... Not, it's, right. it's, it's, it's a hybrid of like World War One and... Oh, okay. And drone war. war. And drone, yeah. So yeah, it's like we're just a, targeted specific. It's sort of old school and, and, bro, and, and high you tech. Bro, and you are... Amazing with drones. Why don't they just put you on? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I did. I did. I, but I think I, there I was a time in, in Kenya and I, I in, in Kenya where you were finding yourself grateful to be escorted by somebody with an AK-47 yes, protecting you, uh, absolutely. putting his life on the on, line. On this most recent trip, we had an opportunity to go on a safari. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not every trip that you get some sort of that's crazy R&R uh, or, uh, or, or uh, what is it called a uh, excursion excursion yeah, yeah excursion. <laughs> Uh, but uh, this particular day, uh, there was another evangelist in town, a guy from uh, Australia that I know very well. He happened to be in the country. And so it's like, hey, well, let's all get together. So we all, we all went to a restaurant and, and we got, we had a, man, we had a good meal at this restaurant. We got to try all this game, like, like, like wild game, like, like wild like game stuff, wild game. like wildebeest yeah. and ostrich and crocodile and man, you know, rabbit. And, Do you have any zebra? Uh, I did have zebra. You did have yeah. zebra. It was you all ate good. It. I ate everything. Yeah, it was cool. all good. You're like I, a lion. Just making sure. Yeah. I, <laughs> and you know what? Uh, I think that was the first time I ever got like meat drunk. Really? I, that has to be a thing. I didn't hear. I didn't know that meat was a drunk, thing. Like, meat drunk. Meat You've drunk. You've had so much meat. meat. Sweats. Some, mm. Maybe something like, like that. Like Thanksgiving. <laughs> mm, no. No? I mean, this was like a like a fogo de chow, but for like, uh, like wild game. It was so cool. But you felt like. 
Uh, yeah, like okay, I've I've reached my I've reached my limit for meat. Meat drunk. You're experiencing a rapid heartbeat, flushed cheeks, and a sweaty brow. Oh, okay. Well, you have yeah. any of that? Yeah, I had some of that. See, mm. look, this one says it's an altered state brought by meat alone. Meat alone. Once protein has ceased yeah. its purpose, it's something. Oh. I knew it was a different. I mean, really? you're talking to a you know felt intoxicated in a sense. Yeah, a little bit. Wow. Oh. I get my okay. wife meat drunk. <laughs> 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 We talked about this. Oh, that, yeah, my bad. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> yeah that, that wildebeest, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's leaning into it. Let's go. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, I mean, I have to try those things because that's where I get some mm. of my enjoyment of trying mm. new things and being different. And, you yeah. Know, not every day this, Not every day needs to be, you know, being a cheese. Ice cream. You know? yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. How is um, it with the uh, children? You see all these children that are just going through the poverty and they're going through all of this. How do you... Like not want to bring them home. Like, that would be <laughs> no, hard. I, I thank you. That's a great question because I, I don't, I don't think I saw it on yours, but I, I think I saw it on Instagram where there was somebody in Africa and they were going for um, ministry or yeah. you know a missionary project, but there was a line of, of of little black kids and they had a faucet open and there was a, a little boy, probably four years old, and. He was just water pouring on him and he would look, you could tell how grateful he yeah. was for water to be poured on him. And then also like it, it, you can tell that there was like, okay, let it bathe you first and then you can drink it. He couldn't wait to drink it. Yeah. And when they told, they gave him a sign, you could tell they gave him something signed where they he was able to drink it and he just <laughs> leaned in and started drinking it. And it was just like. Thirst, man. Oh. Yeah, it's. It, we take all that stuff for granted big time. Oh, yeah. Like like when I'm there, dude, it's like like I almost feel guilty for you know having a bottle of water, you know. Yeah. Like I'm always giving that stuff away. <laughs> We're talking about kids who don't have, you know, yeah. basic yeah. water. I mean, it's tough. It is tough. Sucks, so uh, a lot of times I'm always taking additional resources to try to help with those situations because mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't know that they're going to present themselves. And yeah. when you get back, does it take you some time to decompress from all that cuz that's got to be kind of heavy on you? When you get back, or have you just because you've traveled so much doing this type of work that when you get back, you're kind of not used to it, but it's it's easier to kind of just shift into your regular. Uh, it, life. it it is easy for me to shift, but I do have to decompress at some point. There is a some a moment where I'm like, oh man, like that all catches just up. Yeah, yeah. And and to be honest, a lot of times that happens when I'm in the edit room, oh. and I'm reliving right. these moments that I that were so powerful, that were so Thank amazing. You. And all these different countries, and I have footage of it, and I'm trying to now create a scene. Yeah, uh, and some of it, you know, it can can is is uh, very powerful, is very touching, is very moving. Yeah, uh, some of it can be sad, some of it can, you know, can be happy, and so, you know, when I'm doing all these rounds of edits, man, I'm, my my emotions are all over the place. You know, I'll be you know balling at mm -hmm. nighttime, you know, working on some of these things, uh, and then I have to you know to take a moment to compose myself and then continue forward because it. it that is difficult. You know, it's one thing to live a, some sort of trauma or some sort of uh, moment. And then it's another to always go back to it again and again yeah. and sort of relive it and, and remember. And, and, and then you have to shape it so that somebody else can then see it. To a story. Yeah, right. for sure. So those are the moments when I kind of decompress is I get to spend a lot longer time with it, you know. Mm -hmm. I love how passionate you are about all of this, man. From not even just the work you're doing over there, but even the Spurs thing. Like, mm -hmm. you're really passionate about what you do. And I think that's an a amazing quality that you have. Yeah. And um, um, so, like, you say, you know, you take things, extra things with you. Um, but the big things they need, how, how does that get organized? Is it NGOs specifically? Yeah. And, yeah. That's why I was telling you that Bama yeah. Place is so, like, at a crossroads. Mm -hmm. It's because... A lot of those NGOs just come in and they're yeah. like, oh, we do this. Mm -hmm. you, know, you need this. And yeah. It's, but hard, then you it's, hard, when up, right? it's hard when they don't when they don't have and somebody comes and says, Here, I'll give you this. You, yeah. you want to say yes. Right. But yeah. you don't know that they're setting you up for a yeah, for, for paper champ. Yeah, for failure. It's it's tough. Uh, and the people I go with, normally they're they're doing something for the ministry, but mm -hmm. a lot of them will do some sort of humanitarian something. You know, right. Whether that's food, whether that's uh, water, whether that's, you know, uh, medical, could be medical, could be 
I mean, I'm, I've seen I've seen a lot of different things, man. Like the ministry part is passport preachers. Yeah, passport preachers. Um, I mean, that's that alone started just with me doing these smaller videos for these ministries mm -hmm. uh, until uh, w one of my uh, friends of a friend saw one of those videos online and was like, "Oh, I, I need something like that." You know, uh, w one of my uh, friends from Harlingen, uh, Pastor Kevin Ortiz, he saw one of my promo videos online mm -hmm. and he drove all the way to San Antonio because he's like, brother, I got a, I got a trip to Kenya coming up and I saw that little video you did and, and I want you to come with me and you know what? You can make whatever you want. Mm -hmm. he, he gave me the you know, keys of the kingdom. He's like, right. you, 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 you make what the Holy Spirit wants you to make. And that yeah. ended up being the first episode of Passport Preachers. And now I've... I've made like six of them already. There's a bullet point that says freeing slaves in Pakistan. Ah, yeah. So, so <laughs> what's been great about Passport Preachers is it went from just like a one video to one movie to a couple movies, but now each each time we make a, we make a movie, there's some sort of social action behind it. And so one of the things I was doing with the group First Responder Ministries is we've been to India and we've been to Kenya together, and I told them about the situation that was going on in Pakistan and also India that they have they have slavery out in the open. What are they what are they out, out um, in the open? What are the slaves doing? They're building pyramids. A, a majority of them are in uh, making bricks. They're making, in like brickyards. Oh really? And so a lot of there's many uh you can look up uh yeah Pakistan brickyard brickyard Kinlan. And these people live outside. They're they're a majority of them are under generational debt mm -hmm. and so they've like either the father or the grandfather took on a debt and oh. the whole family becomes enslaved wow. that's that's north Fuck. korea yeah oh yeah it's 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 out, and it's out in the open so they make bricks day in day out the whole family because their family took on the debt the debt and and then what ends up happening is uh later during the course of the, their life maybe they take out more debt and so they never able can can pay off or they can never ever work Right, to pay, off, to pay what off. off. Oh yeah, but that's a translation to capitalism. And they stay slaves but forever. And not, the kids. The, wow. Uh, I don't know if there's any shots of the kids here, but the kids, uh, they they work in these dangerous environments. They're carrying. They're carrying back bricks. And children to it. They they carry these bricks on their heads. Oh, know? I've seen that. And they're carrying all these bricks, and their heads get flat by carrying these bricks for so long. They have flat heads. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I saw that. I was like, that's an incredible skill, but. It, the fact that their heads probably fat because the yeah. I flat be, the, they they weren't kids that I was seeing they were an, they were adults by the time it's probably that their heads were were flat yeah, it's, a, by it's a very very sad situation that oh, the the, the, the kids are abused the women are abused I mean you can only imagine like who who's enslaving them is it the Pakistani government no, or is it certain the, factions the of owner, warlords the owners of the brickyards. 70-year-old Basanti Meghwar spends her days making bricks to pay off a debt. So does her son Punjo, his wife, and their son Dilip. It's the only life the 12-year-old has ever known. <laughs> The family borrowed money from the owner of the brick kiln more than two decades ago to pay a hospital bill. Now, they spend long days breathing in dust under the scorching desert sun and firing bricks in massive underground kilns. <laughs> and they don't know if they'll ever get out of here. The owner of the kiln tells them he's keeping half of the money they earn to make payments on their loan. But Punjo hasn't seen the contract since he signed with his thumbprint 23 years ago. And there's no record of how much is left to pay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Meghwars are among the millions of people in Pakistan who spend their lives making bricks to pay off debts to wealthy landowners. These bricks will be used in construction projects across Pakistan. This exists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look like at right this. now, right now. Yeah, Look at this. And it and it, th that's a black and white picture. I imagine that this has yeah. been going on for centuries. Yeah. So now 
that I've realized that this is going on. I've reached out to my friends in both uh, India and Pakistan. See, I, I got a trip to India. It was a real powerful trip uh, mm-hmm. in, in 2019 with the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi. And what? So, yeah. So I, I got to go with the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi and the great grandson of Gandhi. And we went on a pilgrimage tour all across India. So I got to see all these places that Gandhi himself went to, <laughs> stayed at, uh, you know, built ashrams, you know, and, and uh, Gandhi was very big, you know, about uh, nonviolence right. and, and peaceful protest and, mm-hmm. you know, all these good things. And but I got to be with his, you know, grandson, a guy, a guy who actually lived with Gandhi. You know, the, 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 and so, so I went across India and that's when I first saw these slaves. Like literally we rolled up in a big bus and we got out and we got to see like this, this brick, brickyard, all these people making bricks. Mm-hmm. And there were the families just making bricks, bricks, you know, they're all sitting in and break bricks. And it's, I mean, it was horrible. It was hot. It was ugly. And I mean, we weren't even there an hour. We saw them. We took some photos uh, with the, they, they had built a little school there for the kids because mm-hmm. the kids, they don't go to school. Out of those bricks? Uh, I, I think so. What are they doing with those bricks? Bro, these are like the cheapest They're coming bricks, here? The cheapest oh. of the cheap bricks. And they sell them all over Pakistan. Everything oh, is built with these bricks. So that's bricks. used to make their And stuff. also India. So India wow. and Pakistan have these similar bricks, cheap bricks, people for labor, slaves, generational but, debt. But meanwhile, that's all they do for that's their life. They yeah. They, those, they're there. Uh, what we uh, call cheap Some bricks. of them, they don't even know. Some of the kids don't even know their own age, bro. They don't know how old they are. They wow. just know that's all they've done. That's all they know. And that's all they're going to do. And that's all they're going to do. That's Fucking all they're ever so, going to know. So the reason why I bring it up is when I saw this in India and, and when, you know, we, I saw these kids, I thought, man, there's a reason why I'm mm-hmm. seeing this. Like, mm-hmm. Lord, like, show mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what am I supposed to do here? Because mm-hmm. once we saw everything, we got back on the bus, bro, and we just left. Like, what? Like, you, <laughs> one person, right? Yeah. Like, how helpless it, 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 does that feel? Well, I came up with, you know what? I'm going to try to help at least one. So I gotcha. found I found uh, a slave in Pakistan uh, that he was a he has a brother. There's two two brothers, and the only debt that they owed was eight hundred and fifty dollars, and both of them were my enslaved. My gosh! And so it took some time to vet this guy, vet the brother, vet my friend, the the brickyard owner. But long story short, uh, I got one of my one of the groups I roll with, First Responder Ministries. I, I told him about that about the situation and they said oh well we'll partner with you and so yeah we we went we we went to pakistan and uh since that time uh we were we weren't able to free one slave we were able to free over 50 families you slaves. paid their debt we paid off their debt so we paid the 850 <laughs> That's the yeah. fucking that's that's the one that means the most right there <laughs> yeah. we do this for birthdays we do this for yeah. mother's day that's yeah Chains You've, broken, bro. Chains broken for their children. Yeah, for generational the whole changes. Yes, absolutely. And not only did we break their chains, but we moved them into like a Christian community because Pakistan is like 90, 98, Muslim. 99% Muslim. Mm-hmm. So there's only a few places where these families can go. And so we got them into a Christian community. We got them um, uh, some some things to to make a living, like mm-hmm. shoe shine kit. Mm-hmm. We got them sewing kits. We got them uh, like a washing machine kit. We got them a uh, uh, and those are standard jobs for yeah, that they India. could do that they can try right. to, to to make a living with make money yeah, um, yeah. And, and so yeah so the slave thing is is been really huge it's kind of been under the radar cuz I'm you know doing stuff in Ukraine and Congo mm-hmm. and all these things but I definitely want to go back I think that can be the film that could win me an Oscar easy a hundred percent. I I just think about and I'm not trying to make a political statement right but the amount of money that we sent to the Ukraine right just a fraction of that could pay off these these oh, families' yeah, yeah. debts. Yeah, I, and and of all the things, normally when I meet somebody and I sort of rattle off of you know this and that and you know Bibles to Cuba and and you know helping orphans in Uganda and you know, but when I say you know freeing slaves in Pakistan, like a lot of people they stop and they say, well, I, how can I help with that? Right, or, uh, I can get behind that. You know, not everybody maybe wants to send a bulletproof vest to Ukraine. Right, but they understand that they could be, you know, they could partner to help free a, a, a f- whole family, right. a whole family that's enslaved and give them a, a future. Easy. And Easy. so, yeah, so that's that's another thing that's on the- Because 850 on, bucks. On the, yeah, bro, I some mean, of them are like, you know, 1,000, 1,200. 
and they're working the rest of their the life rest generationally. Of their, life. their family is carrying that on to to yeah. pay that eight hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, it'll probably never be paid off. No, and unless then somebody does it in a lump they sum. They don't even know. Sometimes they themselves don't know how much what they the owe. amount is. And so a lot of that has to do with working it out with the with the owner and, and you know getting them to sign off. And the and owners are willing to work that out. Some, some, some are willing to say okay, I'll, you know, because maybe they they want the cash. You know, gosh. Uh, but bro, let me tell you, like the first time we freed a family, uh, the local village there, man, they threw a celebration like you would not believe. Really, I was like, I, it, it's it's hard to fathom like these people who now have a chance at a real life, right? And the whole community is celebrating for them, and they're happy for them and are joyous. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about when you feel guilty for yeah. for having to leave your children, yeah. which rightfully so, right? But still. <laughs> Yeah. That yeah. type of stuff. You hailed generations of people. Yeah. Not just you. The team of people had to gather together to do to that. To do it. Yeah. I didn't do it by myself. But it was a de- that is team effort. W- that is improving the oh, world. Yeah. yeah. That is improving the world. I mean, bro, like the, the Spurs, you know, get and better. You make rebate, us feel better. You know, yes. like, like I remember when the hurricane hit uh, uh, Tim, Tim Duncan's Virginia. Island. Oh, the yeah. Virgin, Virgin Islands. Virgin Islands. You know, and he he stopped what he was doing, and like he made some calls. They got a plane, they got supplies, and they took it. You know, like that's a kind of like don't that's hesitate. That's a mind frame. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna go do it. Like I don't know how I bro. I didn't know how what I was gonna do in Ukraine. Yeah. I didn't know anybody there. <laughs> but is that I got, what you attested I got, to? I got the opportunity to go. Somebody that 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 Philip guy bought my ticket and said, "Bro, you go." The Philip guy from the Capitol? Yeah, he's the one that bought my ticket to go. And that's then, the thing, right? Is people then, can see that video and say, it's a crazy man that's trying to get attention from going to the Capitol on yeah. inauguration day. But he was he was pivotal in freeing slaves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like all these people I roll with, I'm giving them a piece, like I'm using my gift. And in mm-hmm. this case, it's the gift of the camera. It's right. Like, it's a gift of storytelling, of yeah. making films. And I'm sowing that into them, whether it's an NGO, a group. Because uh, a lot of these people I work with, they don't have those big media teams. They don't have camera people. They don't have, mm-hmm. you know, photographers, everything. You know, they don't or have they'd that. have to pay a, Correct. Yeah, an yeah, enormous yeah. amount yeah, of yeah. money for it. Absolutely. But, I mean, now it's like I see things and I'm like, man, that's a, that's a whole family right there. Or that's, mm-hmm. you know, I could, I could have freed, you know, a husband and wife or, a, you know, a little girl. Like so many things come to my mind now. Uh, and Do so I want I want to make sure that I keep pushing all the good stuff to the nations, and I I I keep uh, that momentum. Yeah, and, and I keep helping more. And so I, I can't wait to go back to Pakistan. Can't wait to go back to mm-hmm. to Ukraine. Can't wait to go back to Kenya. I mean, there's so much so much good work to do. That sinks in for you that you're doing that type of stuff, does it? Now it does. I mean, it used to be uh, once you talk about it, right? Once it's really like. Yeah. Okay. It's but it's hard because some people, bro. Some people just outright don't believe you. I was uh, yeah back to you know going on a trip and then and then going on a trip with my family. Uh, I took my family on a cruise, mm-hmm. and so we were at the, having a good time with the cruise. You know, I was trying to rest, you know, the spa. I've been traveling, and so I go to the bar to get us all some water, bottled waters, uh, and. I, I got to the bar and there's a lady standing there and she looks at me and she smiles and she's like, "Oh hi." Who are you and, and what do you do? Hmm. So I was like, oh, hey, uh, you know, my name's Alejandro and I'm a filmmaker and a, a missionary and humanitarian. And, you know, I just went on a quick little list of da 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 da. And her face, she was like, I don't believe a word you just said. <laughs> You're lying to me. Wow. And she's like, I'm not talking to you. And she walked away. I was like, oh, wow. That's it's true. Crazy. It's all true. Because I believe everything people tell me when I'm on a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I own this business and I do this. this. No, like, that's it's, badass, it's funny bro. Because, <laughs> like, wow, that, and I, I mean, it makes sense. I, I was, I, I've been on cruises and 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 I I love doing karaoke on yeah. cruises and I'm very entertaining. Yeah. So they would come up to me and like, what do you do for a living? I would tell them my profession. And they're like, no, that's nah. ridiculous. Like you can't do that. And I'm like, I do. And they're like, no, but. What they're saying is like, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be entertaining people. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's hard because anybody can make up a story. Anybody can make a story. But it's true. I but have, who can I tell have, a story? I have, I have the track know? record. Yeah. Uh, I have well, you those... document it all. <laughs> like literally. Yeah. A, a majority, I, yes. A majority I do document uh, with the hope of turning it into a, you know, a, a possible you know, feature film. Um, but 
a lot of it, actually, what, what's been really remarkable is that I would say the last I don't know, five to seven years, more and more often I'm putting the camera down because I'm having to serve, I'm having mm-hmm. to help. Mm-hmm. And the teams that take me, mm-hmm. uh, they're okay with, you know, hey, put the camera down. Let's right. you know, jump in. Let's, let's roll our yeah. sleeves up. And that's been, that's been a lot of fun. That's been yeah. really, really rewarding for me. Uh, not having that like, you know, when I was younger uh, and, and maybe some other people feel the same way, but it's like, if they're not, if they're not using the camera or taking a photo or a video, it's like, right. What are you doing? Like, yeah. Are you, You're are not you? doing your job. Yeah. That, that kind of thing. But it's my job as a human. And, and my job is to, to tell the story in the right. way that I. And how, and yeah. And you can better embrace the story yeah. by rolling your sleeves up and yeah. getting in there. And, and that's really what Ukraine has been all about. Like there were so many times that I, Definitely rolled up my sleeve. At one point, bro, I was part of a covert network of drivers driving in supplies by myself, not even with wow. an interpreter, into Ukraine, going to random, you know, rendezvous areas to, yeah. to to put supplies and stuff in another truck so that they could take it, you know, seven or eight hours deeper into Ukraine. So And you're driving or were you ever driving like <laughs> I came here to to yeah. shoot some videos. Yeah. <laughs> like, what yeah. Doing right now? So I think you asked earlier, has there ever been a moment where you kind of like Oh, wait, like, realize what was going on? Mm-hmm. That day I did. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I had taken I had taken a shipment into Ukraine, uh, met my rendezvous point, uh, put all the supplies over, uh, got the, it was a chaplain, so he, he did a little video message for me, you know, saying thank you. And and then I got back in the car, and so I'm driving back by myself, and I'm, I'm still, like, I got this, like, adrenaline rush of, like, yeah, mission accomplished, we made it. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I could hear a, a jet flying over here, like, and I'm like, Oh shit! Oh like, my god! I'm in a war zone. Yeah, I'm in a war zone. That's like a Russian airplane overhead. Like, how did I get here? Yeah. <laughs> like, what am I doing here? I'm supposed to be like courtside at the Spurs. Like, and here I'm driving a car by myself. I don't have a map. I don't speak the language. And that's, mi- mission yeah. accomplished. That is another question I was that, meaning to ask. It's a language barrier. Ah, uh, yeah. So, uh, unless you have an interpreter, you know, mm-hmm. that, that's helping you along the way. Normally, it's like the, your host or or, or somebody uh, related to the organization who can mm-hmm. talk you along. Uh, to be honest, bro, one thing that's helped me, other than learning just from normal everyday phrases when you go somewhere, mm-hmm. um, things that help you with uh, hello, goodbye, and, right. and just basic stuff, is I use Google Translate, Google Translate bro. Uh, like, it's like life-saving. Like, yeah, if you can point it at signs. Point it at signs, it would and talk. It changes or it. I could talk to somebody and sort of... Mm-hmm. Relay it. Re- relay the information. Nice. Um, it's amazing. Technology, bro. Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you one cool story with Google Translate. Uh, we were at the Poland border, and every day it was just something different and new. People were you know, coming in, refugees coming out, volunteers coming in to go serve with the Foreign Legion and all <laughs> sorts of stuff. And security is really tight. You know, nobody wants photos or video. You know, it's all, there's no press. That's the other cool thing about my documentary is I was in a lot of places where there was no press around that I got access to, that I filmed. So wow. my, my documentary is pretty special because it features a lot of footage that nobody else has. Good. So in, in doing that, I had to be mindful of the security and the barriers. And you know, I don't want to get any, anybody mad. I don't want to mm-hmm. get my phone taken, deleted, all that stuff. Um, but I think what was really remarkable is that the refugees – also had phones. So they were like filming things, taking, oh, photo, wow. taking photos of us. Yeah. And I realized that and I thought, oh, okay. Because me sticking out with my uh, volunteer vest and like mm-hmm. everyone knew who everyone was. And your, and your brown skin? And my brown skin, <laughs> right? Yeah, bro, there wasn't that many brown, I know. Br- brown skins over there. I but know. I spoke a lot of Spanish because uh-huh. I ran into Mexicans. I ran into really? people from Spain. I what are they doing over there? South, there were volunteers. Oh, okay. And everybody would wear their like, you know, Patches, patches and, from and, the countries. And, the countries. Oh. and so, dude, I was talking a lot, of Spanish, way more Spanish than I ever really? thought. Really? See, and, and, and Ukraine, yeah, where it was, it was quite fun. Uh, but I got to the point where I would take off my vest mm-hmm. and I would mingle with the refugees. I'd get in line, I'd get in the queue, and that's how I was able to film like a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And nobody would come down on me. Nobody Plain would, sight. Nobody would crack down on me. Nobody would cause me any problems. Mm-hmm. And I just got to. I was able to capture some amazing, amazing moments. Uh, which had turned into a two-hour documentary. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, Let's but- talk about your music videos and we'll wrap this up. Buttercup. <laughs> Who's Buttercup? It's, oh, man. It's a religious band? 
No, no, they're oh. they're a super cool art rock band here in San Antonio. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they're they're San Antonio darlings for sure. That I've I I met these guys at the band. San Antonio Underground Film Festival back in mm, 2004, maybe. Take some yeah, videos. that's them. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Oh wow, they look <laughs> awesome. Awesome band. Awesome. They're a lot of fun. Super creative. Mm-hmm. Super creative. Um, the San Antonio Underground Film Festival that I met them, they had a documentary showing. They mm-hmm. they did a, a little documentary on a on a performance that they were doing, and it was such a it was such an interesting performance. These guys uh, were playing at a place called Graco Graco Moody, mm-hmm. and instead of just you know setting up their band in the middle of the venue and just having people around them, right? They decided, no, we're gonna set up in the attic, huh. and then we're gonna take all these cameras and s- sort of like this and. And stream it from the and, attic? And, and stream it from the attic. But not oh. not online. This is before like streaming online. Okay. So they ran cables to monitors and they put the monitors in big oil drums. So when you came into the venue, there was these big oil drums like on the in the room. You're and talking then, about monitor speakers. Yeah, no, monitor like TV. Speaker. Oh, okay. So so you would have to look inside a barrel to see the TV. Whoa. Like, oh, there's the uh, the lead, yeah? the lead vocals. There's a drummer in that barrel. Huh? And so it was this kind of wacky. It's artistic. Though. Artistic, cool idea. So you could definitely hear the music, but you couldn't see them perform live. You'd have to look in the in the barrels to see them perform. Oh. And so it was a cool, cool concept. Great short little documentary. And fell in love with these guys. What's that documentary uh, called? Ooh. Do you remember? Mm. It's okay. We can find it. It's later. on DVD. I have it. So, so long story short, uh, that I, I fell in love with them, and so for all these years that we, I would see them, and you know, first Fridays and different mm-hmm. events, mm-hmm. we would always be like, "Oh, hey, yeah, we're gonna do something. We're gonna do something." Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, eventually, I don't know, fifteen years later, uh, we'd start doing music videos, and yeah. now these guys, they they've been on like NPR and they've been write ups in Texas Monthly and. Wow. Uh, it's turned into a really good relationship. Uh, now I'm like their pseudo creative director, mm-hmm. and so we've already we we've done uh, Luminaria. We were featured. We were featured artists in Luminaria. Mm-hmm. Uh, we wow. did. A, I did an ASMR ASMR film with them. Really, that, that premiered at Luminaria. Huh. Uh, and we've done quite a few shows together where like we build the show. So here we got to do a live album. They've never done a live album before. We did a live album at. Uh, the old Casbier's church in Southtown. You guys familiar with the, the church in Southtown? Oh, that one, that one little church that's right like, in the middle of everything. Yeah, sort of. It's like mm-hmm. on down the corner. It has, it has a lot of stained glass. Uh, used to be Casbier's, but anyway, uh, they did a, a, a live album, and I did. I came and I shot a, a music video f- to go with that live album. Wow! So we shot it all there in front of an audience uh, in this spooky haunted former church. Oh, is it reportedly haunted? Yeah, ha- haunted by a little boy. They said what? And uh, yeah, we did two nights and we sold out. We sold out the show, and so it's they've been really good because I'm like their uh, man. If we ever have the chance to interview one of them, we'd love oh, it. Oh, dude, they're a lot of fun. I, I back when it. I was uh, at KSYM at, at mm-hmm. San Antonio College, I would bring them in all the really? time, and yeah, we would have a blast and I would play their music. Are you and 50 so, years old? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> You've lived like seven lifetimes. It's right? incredible, man. I'm just so grateful. I started when I was young, and, yeah, and, and I, re- I, I realized, uh, you know, that this is what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I picked up the camera at age nine, went pro at 12, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I've been doing it ever since. And even now, some of the people that I, I, you know, would grow up. Oh man, I would, I'd love to work with them, or I'd love to, you know, do a video with them, or do. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I've done like I've done them, you know. I, I've worked with the, the you know NBA, I worked with the Spurs, mm-hmm. you know, we get the, the, the Emmys, the the advertising awards. Like man, I did all that, and then mm-hmm. a certain point came to where, oh man, I can use this gift, I can use this camera for for something even bigger, something even better, right? Uh, and I can I can go and I can help change people's lives with this gift, and so yeah, that's what I've been. And that's what you're doing. I've now. been doing, yeah, and then that that's kind of the full time thing now, and you know, if I'm not around the world, I'm. Courtside with the Spurs. What are you most proud of? Uh, I'm most proud of most proud of my family for for sticking by me, yeah, and for letting me do all these things because it's not easy, right? And these these last two Ukraine trips of all the trips uh, were definitely pretty difficult because mm-hmm. uh, one of the more difficult things when you're traveling in, in this type of uh, environment or business ministry is 
you might be in a risky place, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you're like in danger all the time. Right. But your family at home feels like feels you're in danger way. all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I know that can take a toll. Mm -hmm. So that's why I have to be very, uh, I have to go above and beyond to, to, to call, right. to text, mm -hmm. to do the video. Yep. I'm okay. This is good. A lot of times I'll, <laughs> I'll have to tell my wife, don't, don't worry about what you see on Facebook. Or don't worry about that last post. the news, not, right? Because no, no, no. What, what he's say. posting. What like, I'm posting. Yeah, okay. because yeah. if you're, you, you're behind tanks, <laughs> don't worry yeah. about that. It, yeah, it yeah, looks the, bad. It but, looks bad, but we're, I'm okay. We're all, we're all yeah. right. You know, don't, don't worry about the news. The news. Yeah, the news, yeah, right. the news will, will they black. They were bombing Kiev the they're, other day. Like, they're bombing Donetsk. They're bombing, <clears> you know, Kherson. Alejandro, aren't you? You were in Kherson. Like, what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. So, again, just... Going man, shout out to your wife again, yes, bro. Yes, one hundred percent, man. My like, God, she's amazing. Wife of the year, teacher yeah. of the year, yeah, bro. Teacher of the year, wife of the year, mother of the year. Geez, we need to get bro. her on here and say, yeah, yeah, ask her story. How is it yeah. being with Alejandro? Because <laughs> I know I can't miss one day without my kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna say, "How do you do it? How are you doing?" She, I don't, I don't sleep. You know, I, yep. I, I pick pick my moments and. Mm -hmm. If I get into the flow on something, or if I'm editing something, or being creative, I I take it for as long as I can go, yeah. and then and then good stuff comes from it, and then people see it, and then more good stuff comes from it. So it becomes a cycle. Yeah. And so as long as I'm you know diligent and I'm you know putting myself out there, and, mm -hmm. and one of the things I say is you know when you move, God moves. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely true. So yeah. I got to make sure I keep taking that step, and 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 God will God will step in. Well, you're amazing, bro. I, I don't know if enough people have told you that, but oh, we'll you. definitely tell you that from the bottom of our hearts. You're an amazing person. Thanks, man. Everything you're doing is amazing. Uh, you got us to tone down the podcast, so that's amazing. <laughs> it was easy. That I'll itself. say that you made it easy. I feel, I feel, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel I, loving presence here. So. I, mean, oh, yeah. I think this is the quietest, well, for them too, the quietest they've ever been because Big, you just, you're such a good storyteller and your stories are inspirational. It's And, and that that's saying a lot, especially for me. I don't, I'm not very. Religious. He doesn't get inspired. He's not, very he's not allowed to talk. But it's. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, you've made this, and like it, it makes me personally. I can't speak for them, but kind of rethink a lot of things because you've done a lot for a lot of people. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think it it, it helps it helps um, put this podcast in perspective and and the the direction that we can go in. I mean, we can go in all directions. We can be flexible. We can be immature. <laughs> we can be mature and and sober. Um, you know, not. <laughs> sober in our conversations, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, about the discussions that we're having. I think this is the deepest discussion we've had about humanity. Mm. Um, I'm an empath, you know. I know it doesn't feel like that, but I, I am, you know, because the <laughs> things that I see of people struggling and, and things like that, when you saw the Netflix documentary about the Ukrainian spirit, yeah, yeah. Uh, when they fought for their freedom and things mm -hmm. like that, I really bought into that. Um, I don't know about all the politics and corruption they talk about, but I know that the spirit of the Ukrainian people is something that's incredible. Big time. Bro. And I'm sure you got to experience yeah. that firsthand. Yeah. But it just, when you're there, there's this unity that just, it's, it's, it's hard to describe. I think America right. used to have it. Yes. But bro, when you're there, no. it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter who you're affili affiliated with. Right. People will work together like that in a heartbeat. No hesitation. Like yep. I, I was somewhere and, and these guys were, at this table, we're talking about, oh, we have five tons of food for this and that. Yeah. And this guy, we had a bunch of trucks. And he's like, well, wait a second. Hey, I heard you say you had this food. We have these trucks. Mm -hmm. Let's meet and let's take it out. And the next yeah. day, bro, we have a we're mission. And we're going out and we're helping hundreds, thousands of people. Yep. Yeah. And it's they're not thinking it easy. for themselves. Yeah. Like, this is what is my mission? It's like, no, well, let's get part of the bigger mission. And then you go to, to um, this is Ukraine, which is established civilization, right? And then you go to, you know, Kenya, which is, yes, you go to Nairobi, that's an established yeah, yeah. civilization, but the outskirts of that, yeah, the, not the as established. Uh, Small brick and mortar type homes. And you see those people and that perspective is different, but that exists and we have no idea that yeah. that exists. We're yeah. so far removed from it. I saw somebody broken down on the road the other day and I thought to myself, I remember when there was a day that I would pull over and help them. Mm. But I got to get back from lunch. Like, yeah, I got to get to the next. Yeah. And I just thought, I was thinking consciously, I, I got to get back to lunch. I want to help him. I don't even know if he's broken down or he's having a medical emergency. And I pass back by and I see that, you know, his car's gone, but the but the ambulance is still there. Oh, okay. and, and, you know, and I'm like, man, maybe he was having a medical emergency. Yeah. I didn't stop for that, yeah. you know, because we're American. We got, 
We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta. Do. Yeah, and that's another thing. Traveling has helped me. Is is the rest of the world goes by a different beat, mm-hmm. Cadence. different drum beat, big yep. time. And and they're a lot more aware of of, of taking care of themselves. Right. Uh, they're a lot more aware of, of of making sure they get good rest. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas, I mean, I'm typical. Bro. I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't sleep last night. I was editing all night. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm a poster child for you know, go go mm-hmm. go until right. you know, oh, I need a rest now. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll rest. But if I'm in that flow, I'm going for it. You know, right. if before I went to Kenya, I was I was shooting that music video two mm-hmm. nights, and then mm-hmm. I had to go straight to the house, pack, and boom, I'm gone. Yeah. And then when I get back, I, I booked another thing right 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 up against that right. date, and so I had to go and do it. So you have a purpose though. You you have a big purpose, it seems like, and there's there's some calling, you know, um, and uh, we're glad that you're answering it. I, I, I'm glad that you're answering it. You know, I think that humanity, the world needs more people like that. Yeah. Um, and we just don't get out of our own way yeah. sometimes. Yeah. No, it's just, it's good to be around fellow fellow like-minded people. That's been 100%. really, really huge. I mean, the, the whole sports organization is just phenomenal. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're always sharpening that iron when you're, you're talking with people there. Right. Uh, from from pop to RC to you know any of the operations guys you know yep. uh, we want to get better every day and and you know sometimes and Coach Pop has said it you know that there's more to life than basketball yep yeah and so I, I've taken that to heart and yeah uh, as a matter of fact I was really overcome uh, with a lot of emotion when I got back from Ukraine the second time because the Express News did a write up on me oh wow and the title was. Uh, Spurs photographer, yeah. Spurs yeah. cameraman also documents global hotspots. Oh yeah, I remember seeing that. And you uh, know, looking you up, yeah, <laughs> so, not randomly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the article comes out, and, and it's not like I'm like pushing it or, or mm-hmm. sending it. Mm-hmm. But when I went to the game, I had no idea how many people had read it. And so mm-hmm. as as I'm going through the day, and people would catch me, oh brother, I read the article. Keep up the good work. Like all these people, all of a sudden, had all these really emotional like touching messages for me. And I had like no idea. Wow. I mean, a lot of times, I, I mean, it's late at night. I'm in my own man cave, you know, just editing, doing my own thing. Or I'm in another country by myself. It is a lot of alone time. Yeah. And not a whole lot of glory. Yeah, no. Nah, I mean, it's not. Like, it is yeah. not for the glory, but doesn't that feel great? Right? Those moments, yeah. I for, mean, I had, yeah, uh, the, the, my crew were at the rodeo, he, he, like put me on blast in front of everybody. Like, oh, this is Alejandro. Mm-hmm. He's been to Ukraine twice. You yeah. know, I love this man. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, brother, I love you. He shook my, like very out of the ordinary interactions I've had. And not because I went about my ways so that right. that could happen. You, you just puff your chest out yeah, and this is no. what I did or how to and man, medal. Like overcome, like big time overcome with emotion. Cause all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, like I'm, I'm not, Seeking this, yeah, right. you're just like I'm, just Alejandro. Yeah, I, I'm just trying, yeah. bro. I'm you're just, following yeah. what you're calling, but but to, know, but to know that you have that support, yeah, uh, I mean oh, that's yeah. huge. That's yeah. really really huge. Like people you wouldn't even imagine would know or would care, mm-hmm. are are pulling for you, and yeah. I mean it's it's been life changing. And and once once I realize I can use that gift for good, mm-hmm. uh, everything changed. And and you know when you serve others, when you when you put yourself last, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's a wonderful adventure. And I wouldn't change it for anything. Yeah, that's a testament to leadership, right? And you learn that leadership from the San Antonio Spurs organization, and and I think that ins- that inspires me as a leader a leader of people um, to to say that you know the philosophies you carry, yep. um, and that getting better every day and the improving your work ethic every single day. Um, is something that's true and can carry forward. It's not just for the task at hand. It's for the future and future generations. And what you're doing is really, really, like, truly... Generational fucking... Generational. That's I want to ask you one question yeah. before you go. Yes, please, tell me. Most beautiful place you've ever been. Um, Because hmm. you've seen it all, man. <laughs> uh, d- yeah, deserts, jungles. Um, yeah. What was it where you're just like, man, this is... I, I, amazing. Sheesh, I really, really connected on a real deep level. Again, I could talk. We could talk for a while. We're the, good. The, we got all the time. The, in the, the world. Sea of Galilee. Really? The Sea of Galilee. The area around the Sea of Galilee. <laughs> My where, poor sister, bro. She doesn't know how to spell <laughs> any of the <laughs> words that she learn. said today. <laughs> no, it, yeah. Two L's mm-hmm. or, We're good. No, yeah, look at that. Yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> look at this. It's second just, one, second image. This one? There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
It's beautiful. Wow. It's beautiful. You can see uh, the cities and towns on the other side. Mm -hmm. And being there, I really connected, to be honest, with the historical Jesus. They just a mm -hmm. real human being Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because he grew up uh, in this like, uh, almost like a metropolitan area. Okay. He didn't. He didn't grow up in Jerusalem. You know, like oh. the, the political area. He, he went there. He didn't. He didn't grow up. He was like. He was like in the frontera, dude. Oh, and really? And so, so in a lot of ways, uh, he where he was born and where he grew up, mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't even considered like full Jew. Oh. So, so him and a lot of the other people in the Galilee, mm -hmm. like when they would go to the synagogue to read the the scripture, mm -hmm. they wouldn't even let them read because they thought like their accent was was mm. disrespecting the word of God. Whoa. So so being there and walking around this area. That's the area he grew up in? Yeah, yeah. dude, the Sea of Galilee. You know, this is the, I don't where, know. where all the fisher, it's where they did all the fishermen, it's where he went and told them, uh, mm -hmm. you know, come out of the water, I'll, you know, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Because mm -hmm. they were fishermen. They all worked there on the, on the lake. Oh. And... Just walking around, the Bible came to life, mm -hmm. uh, and I got to really feel what it was like to kind of be in that time period. Wow. And I realized Jesus was kind of like, uh, kind of like, kind of like us, kind of like, right. kind of like a Mexican, Mexican almost. Yeah, you know that that you're sort of between. It's tough to be Mexican American. Yeah, you have to be yeah, exactly. more American than American, more <laughs> exactly. Mexican than Mexican. And Jesus had to go through that. Yeah, he had to be more Jew, Jew than, than a, but then he had to be more Galilean than all the other Galileans. Galileans. You know. That, it, remember, he was from Nazareth, and they said, you know, what good, does anything ever good come from Nazareth? Mm -hmm. No. So even his hometown was, you know. Oh, really? His, and so, his hometown was Tijuana? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So, I wonder, forget it. Realizing, yeah, realizing that he lived in this area mm -hmm. and how similar it was to, to, to where we live, right. uh, being out on the borderlands, yeah. being in a mix of, of cultures. Right. Uh, Man, what an exciting time to be alive. It's a prophet and of strife. It was beautiful. I mean, it's a beautiful area. Green, it's very rich, uh, you know, wow. rivers and everything. And yeah, I had a really big, big time breakthrough there because I was like, man, like homeboy Jesus was mm -hmm. just like us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Walking, you know, Human. had chanclas. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Homeboy yeah. yeah. Jesus. Oh. Working hard. <laughs> right. And I walked those same steps and I can't wait to go back. I, I, I'm probably... If all goes well, I might go back later this year to do a documentary there. That's nice. beautiful, man. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited about well, that. Well, keep in touch with us, man. We would love to yeah. keep bringing you back. You have so mm -hmm. many interesting stories. I'm sure this didn't even... Scratch the surface. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have some good ones. We didn't even get to get into WWE. Let's go. I don't I care. Almost... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Did you fight them sick, man? Yeah. I almost fought uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. What? what? Yeah, you got to hear this. Please, yes, because my do. son's going to listen to this and his favorite wrestler is Rey Mysterio Jr. Look, and I really would like more info on this, so I'm happy I'm going to tell this story because nobody knows this story. Uh, so let's let's rewind, right? Uh, before, Rey Mysterio Jr. Okay. Before, and make some popcorn. Yeah. Okay. And, and, also, <laughs> and also Rikishi. He's part of this. Oh, he's part Rikishi of this bloodline. He's part of this story. All right. So Rey Mysterio and Rikishi. Look them up. So let, let, me, let me set the stage real quick because this is a good one. It's 2003. So it's before I'm working with the Spurs. But I, I got my foot in the door doing all this AV and, and concerts and, you know, Metallica, Aerosmith, and nice. uh, Gloria Stefan, you know. And these bands come in with a lot of equipment, bro. I'm talking like 18 semi-trucks worth yeah. of gear, like lights and everything. And, and uh, WWE is no different. They come in with rings right. and lights and all that stuff. They have all those brands, right? So they come into town for smack. Down, I'm pretty sure it was SmackDown. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm working with like all my idols, you know, Stone Cold's <laughs> there, Big Show, you know, Undertaker, all these, you know, all these cats. And it's lunchtime. So we spent the day like building, you know, the lights and the the, the stage and, and all that stuff. And it's lunchtime. So what was really interesting is that in the lunch, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the craft, services. craft service area where they're serving the food, all the wrestlers were there eating too. And I'm, mind you, I'm still a young guy. I'm, I'm still in, in high school. So I'm, you know, I'm there like, oh, okay, wow. All these, all these wrestlers I know, this is cool. So I was a little bit starstruck there. Yeah. I was like, okay, I know all these guys. Uh, at the time, 
Eddie Guerrero was champion. So he's walking around with his oh, man. championship man, belt. Badass. And I got to talk to him a little bit. He's just <sighs> fucking badass guy. You know, just <laughs> carrying the belt, right? <laughs> so was he Dominic's dad? Was he Dominic's dad? <laughs> was, was he really like that? Like, yeah, he was like that. No, he was absolutely like was that. Exactly. He was such a wonderful guy. I, I was happy I got to interact as, with him when he was a champion because mm-hmm. he wore that belt well. And backstage, right? he was you know, he wow. was the top guy. Uh, so... So we're building this show, right? SmackDown. And we go to go to lunch. We're going to craft services. And I'm like, oh, cool. And just as I walk in, there's Vince McMahon, you know, in his, in his prime. I say it's prime, but he was, he's jacked. Yeah, he's jacked, jacked at the time. <laughs> and he, you know, kind of walks over. And I, you know, he's just right in front of me. And, yeah. you know, he like puts his hand out. I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, so I got to meet him. Oh, so I'm like, oh, wow, Vince McMahon. Cool. That's cool. And I go and I grab some food. But mind you, like... I was still new at the time, mm-hmm. so I didn't know any of like the crew I was working with. I definitely don't know any of the keys that are working on the WWE show and you know the, the, the guys who are directing everybody. Okay. So I just sort of sit at a table by myself. There's all these round tables. <laughs> and then, so I'm sitting at this table by myself and I'm I'm looking around and there's you know, every table has, you know, superstars Super here, stars. superstars <laughs> there, superstars there. Imposter like, syndrome. Yeah, right. And I'm like, I'm like, well, this is wild. I didn't know like shouldn't they, be here. I shouldn't be here. Yeah. I should be in high school. Yeah. I should be doing, but there I am working. <laughs> you know, don't tell my mom I skipped school. Oh, and so I'm there on craft service with all these wrestlers, and out of nowhere, like a bottle cap comes flying through the air and hits me in the head. Like oh, from like yeah. from behind, yeah, and it it hits me and like ricochets onto the table so and lands on the table, uh-uh. and it kind of spins like that, and I'm, and I'm like, did that thing just like hit me in the head? Like mm-hmm. who the like where did this come from? And I you folded up a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even like fully done with my meal. I'm still just there, right? Uh-huh. Starstruck, I get hit with a bottle cap, mm-hmm. and I I I turn around, you know, I'm like. Where did this come from? And sitting at this table behind me is Rikishi. <laughs> he has his glasses on like that. He's a big old guy, right? And sitting next to Rikishi, there's Rikishi. <laughs> He's a big guy. Yeah, I, I remember uh, Rikishi. He, he was, I guess, kind of like this, I guess. And he was wrestling that night, so I, I think he even had his stuff on. No. <laughs> so he's sitting there, and mind you, Rikishi like is out. Rikishi is solid, yeah. just solid face, just deadpan. Mm. He's not making poker faced. Poker face. Mm-hmm. He's making no emotion whatsoever. Just like sitting. that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like one of these. Oh, like one of these. <laughs> and he's just looking in my direction. His sunglasses yeah. on. Next to him oh. is Ray Mysterio Jr. Uh, and he's wearing his uh, he's wearing his mask. And homeboy is chuckling. He's just like laughing. <laughs> He's laughing. He's just like, ha, ha, like this guy right here. Wearing his mask. Y'all are out yeah. of dinner. Wearing, dinner. <laughs> wearing his mask. Yeah, you don't take off your mask, man. Yeah, yeah you, don't, you don't take that off. Lucha libre, bro. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there, craft service, get hit in the head with a bottle cap. I look over. It's Rikishi and it's Rey Mysterio laughing. He's just chuckling. Like I can hear him like laughing. <laughs> and it's kind of awkward because I'm like, well, who threw the damn <laughs> bottle cap? Is it is it Ray like being a you know trying to trying to cause some trouble? No. Or was it Rikishi for whatever the right. you know, reason he threw it at me? Mm-hmm. And so, then he's making a straight face. Yeah, and he's making a straight face. So I'm kind of you know <laughs> you know so he so Rikishi straight face. Ray's laughing, and I'm like okay. So I kind of look away, and then I even I think they even did the. Uh, when you grab a bottle and you kind of like cover the top, you can oh, uh, oh throw yeah. some water or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah the champagne top. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I, I saw like a little, and then I was like, oh, dude, I think they're messing with me. And I was like, I need this job, you know. I don't want to be thrown out. Yeah. You know, I'm already skipping school. You know, I'm going to get in trouble if I go home. I'm like, mom, can you come pick me? I didn't have a car, bro. So wow. like… My mom had to come pick me up after. Okay, come pick me up. Ray Mysterio's yeah. picking on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. So I'm like, dang, how do I? So I did. I I sort of copped out, and I I didn't even finish my food. I got up and I I, wa- I walked out of Crafty because damn, I was afraid that they you were going to pick out. on me. I just walked out. I didn't even finish my food. I'm like, nope, I'm done. You got bullied out of lunch. I got bullied by. By Ray Rikishi. Mysterio and Rikishi. <laughs> it was Rikishi, bro. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, it, was, it was not Ray Mysterio. So, so as I, okay, so 
I have to go back and work, right? So the whole time I'm reliving this moment. Oh, what happened? What happened? Man. And I start to come to the idea. Yeah. I think Rikishi did yeah. that. <laughs> and, and Ray's just being Ray, just laughing it <laughs> up. Like, ah, he's not doing anything, you know. How, how, how much can you mess with this guy before he does something? So long story short. It's the end of the it's the end of the show, right? Uh-huh. So we did, we did. I was there for the show, so I got to see the whole SmackDown. Uh, the la- the final match is Undertaker versus Rikishi, <laughs> and so you know Rikishi goes out, and then the Undertaker gets his whole intro, which is phenomenal, dude. Lightning, and uh, the you're smoke. filming this? Uh, no, I was just working. I was oh, just part of the. Re- okay, okay, I was okay. working. Yeah, I wasn't filming, right, right, but right. I was part of the crew. So I'd already built the, the, the stage and wow. the set, the ring. I was on the ring crew. Yeah, and you I get got to, to do be all there. that. Yeah, I got to. <sighs> Got to bounce off the. I got to do it all. Uh, like, try it out, try it out. <laughs> the so, term. Yeah, everything you dream about as a kid, yes, you were just I'm doing just, it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to slide in, and, and at the same time, the other guys like mixing music. So I like there's lights and music. It was wow. badass. <laughs> so so we we do the whole show. The final match: Undertaker Rikishi. Rikishi gets his ass beat big time. Nice. Uh, and I, I don't. I think it was choke slam or whatever. Rikishi loses. Undertaker comes back. And mind you, I'm already backstage. So I, I kind of get to see how it all goes down backstage. Mm-hmm. And Undertaker comes yeah, through. Uh, <laughs> they congratulate him. And then eventually Rikishi makes his way, you know, because he's the guy who lost. Took him a while to get up. He comes down, comes through the curtain. Uh-huh. And he comes over to where they have, um, there's like a section where all the wrestlers get, uh, I guess, Either makeup, hair, or or accessories, Oil. stuff like yeah. that. There's a little area there, <laughs> yeah. And on that area, they also have all these ice chests with just you know waters and Gatorades and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so as the that's a video game, yeah. <laughs> uh, it it did look something. Check like the video, that. YouTube or something. Yeah. So, okay. I, I, so I you go back. Go to the right there where he's throwing them off a cage. Oh wow! Do- bottom left. Oh, yeah, corner. That, was a, that was a bottom wild left one. corner. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> That's real? That's real. That yeah. happened he, that night? He, he th- no, it didn't no. happen that night. Okay. So I'm backstage. Rikishi comes through the curtain. Mm-hmm. He comes walking over to the ice coolers. Yeah. And just as he had made it to the ice coolers, I had reached in and I had grabbed this purple Gatorade. Oh, my God. It was the last uh-huh, one. No. It was super iced. I was so thirsty. So I was like, ah, oh, Gatorade. So I got it out. And he comes walking up to those ice chests and says, ah. Uh, is there a purple Gatorade? Uh-uh. And he's looking at the ice chest and he sort of follows his eyes to me. <sighs> and I like uncapped my Gatorade. Threw the cap and then out. I threw it. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I, just threw, I sort of threw it. <laughs> and then I walked away. <laughs> that was the best damn Gatorade I ever had in my life. <laughs> Courtesy of WWE. And right behind him. Right oh, oh my God. <laughs> but I did hightail it. I didn't want him to. No, like, hell no. He just got beat, though. Yeah, he just got beat. Imagine <laughs> that fucking story back, right? <laughs> like that mo- Y'all remember that motherfucker I was messing <laughs> yeah, with? Yeah, the yeah, I'm sure they had it. I'm he sure they had threw it. me a Gatorade <laughs> cup <cow> now. <laughs> <laughs> and then right he away. won. I wow. think I was by myself at that table and they were messing with me. That's what <laughs> it I had to be. Me. Yeah, that's all it was. Bullies, bro. Yeah. That's incredible. Know, had, had I been there now, dude, I would have, yeah, heck, yeah, mess with me. Yeah. Oh. But I was just a little <laughs> kid then. I'm going to turn oh, my yeah. camera on him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a kid, man, and you're just like, People are larger than larger life. Than like, life, what the dude. hell are you going to say to them? Like, I don't know. I was just speechless, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, you know, I've seen these guys. I, I know what they're capable of, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but now you'd have a witty comeback or you I pretty, would. Yeah. Or I would have, yeah, I would yeah. have something. But yeah. I did enjoy the something heck out of that Gatorade. Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he got no Gatorade that night. <laughs> oh man, we but don't yeah. want to keep you too long, Alejandro. Oh, no, thank you. Um, we thank appreciate you. your stories. We do want to bring you back. Uh, awesome. Yeah, get you, more you stories. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go around the world a couple more times. Please. And, uh, oh yeah. Bring you back. For sure. Some, I bring you back some world. I bring you back some Spurs because yes. it's going to be an exciting season it this is. year. Oh, Wimby. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited. Oh, I just, I, I feel, I feel like a kid again. To be hundred percent. You know, the whole and, city does. And. You know, there's an opportunity to go back to the show. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm excited to to re uh, pick up my training regimen to get back in, in top broadcast shape. Yep. Uh, and maybe I can win another Emmy. So we'll be looking out for you. Yeah, I'm going to be looking out for you on oh, the cameras. Yeah. Right, on court side, I'm going to be like, yeah. I know that guy. Yeah, that guy right there. Yeah. Uh, and everywhere, I don't care. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but you don't get it. This guy's yeah. saving humanity. <laughs> yeah, my, One slave at a time, baby. My grandma does it all the time. She's like, I was watching the game, but where are you? Uh, Nico, where are you? I'm behind like, grandma, I'm, the I'm camera. The camera. <laughs> like, you're seeing my camera. <laughs> Pero, where are you? Yeah. I'm, to see you. <laughs> I'm there, grandma. I'm there. No, I love that. I love that place. I, I, can't, I can't wait for the season. It's going to be awesome. You have any questions for us? Uh, you don't have to. We ask every well, guest. What was my funniest bit? Oh, that's good. Funny. It was the freaking Ray Mysterio one. Yeah. 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 Just getting back at Rikishi. Yeah. You definitely hit the humor mark. All oh, right. Yeah. Uh, I got yeah. I got play. I know I know we got pretty real earlier, but I definitely 100%. have a lot. Of, no, we love it though. I have definitely have a lot of uh funny stories. Yeah. But that we want to be able to show enjoy. our our versatility, you know, and that we're not just, you know, immature shooting the shit type guys, you know, we're we're actually intelligent. Yeah, yeah some sort yeah um, oh you are and, and uh, i love the i love the podcast and if i didn't i wouldn't be here <laughs> thank <laughs> you so much for joining <laughs> us we appreciate yeah. you really. oh, that's uh, what i was worried about i was like man mm-hmm. he's gonna see it and he's gonna just be yeah well, part, part of us thought we that you were coming to just uh bring us to jesus and stop saying all this bad stuff <laughs> really <laughs> no, I, your we'll entertain no, it. <laughs> no that's why i thought you were gonna cancel on us because i was mm-hmm. like man he's gonna watch it he's gonna watch it and it's not gonna <laughs> like Mesh and I was like, he's gonna cancel. Like, oh, he's gonna, yeah. and then that's why I booked uh, AJ, AJ uh, as well, just in Back case up. you did. <laughs> I was like, because it, it gets tricky trying to get people on. And I mean, I know everybody has their own schedules, but I like it if you tell me you're gonna come on, to, then come on, to come on, you're coming on, yeah. yeah, yeah, and be open, you know, yeah, yeah. and be open, please. Yeah. Well, that's a big reason why I came is because you said, Oh, hey, I think you even like. Prompted me. Are you alluded do to we it? Need to reschedule? Yeah. He's like, we've had other people cancel. Yeah. 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 We had Jerry Springer well, girl. just last week. Oh yeah, we too. had a Jerry uh, uh, Jerry girl that was on Jerry Springer canceled on us like two weeks ago. Comedian canceled on us last week, so yeah, it's kind of. I'm a producer. I know what it's like. Yeah, yeah. it happens. Try to. But when he said that, I was like, okay, well, I can't cancel now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I gotta be there. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. If all That's these what people start using. Yeah. Yeah, okay. commitments are commitments, and it, it goes a long way. Um, my, my wife did it to me the other night. We we, we were we were <laughs> we all been there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Mi amor, I love you. We we were we were we were in in the bed. I was tr- getting ready to call it a night, and she said something like, uh, I, "I was I was just grumbling. Oh, I got to edit this thing, and I got to do this." And then and then she said. Well, go. I mean, you you do it when you're over there. You know, you get up early when you're over there. You you you, you, you somehow you're able to do it all when you're over there. Right. You can do it all now here. You're the comfort of your and own bed. And I was bed. like, Yeah, hon, you're right. Love you. And I got up and I got to it. That's right. And, that's and, what and, that, and that's what it's all about. Yep. So yeah. it's a team. It's a teamwork, yes, and, and you guys are a wonderful team, and I appreciate you letting me be a part. No, of No, we appreciate you. This appreciate is why we you, started man. doing it for stuff like this. Pleasure yeah. is ours, man. And you know what? Let's let's put it here. If uh, if the opportunity works out for me to go either to Ukraine or mm-hmm. back to Pakistan, yep, maybe BFR can can sponsor a vest or or one hundred percent or, or yes. sponsor sponsor a, a, a child being you know freed from slavery or something. One hundred percent. Yeah. So please, so. please, please reach out at any and, opportunity. And I'm just gonna say if y'all think I was pretentious before, uh-huh. if I go and free some slaves, <laughs> oh. Oh boy, boy, boy. Oh, you can't tell me nothing about me. <laughs> no, but please, please, no, please, at the first please. opportunity sure. um, that you, you can for us to be able to help in any sense to do it. that. Yeah. Uh, please, um, because out. I can't imagine that I like going over there. I would love to, if yeah. there's anything I could do to do that, if I had the resources. But if there's something we could do from here, yeah, um, yeah, and I think we all can. That's the cool thing yes. about it. Is, is yeah, everybody... if you have any links or anything you want us to throw on there yep. so we can support, yeah. it, let us know. We'll we'll throw it up on there. Yeah, uh, right now, uh, passportpreachers.org. Yeah, uh, that's where people can go donate mm-hmm. now. Uh, but yeah, that's in the process of, of turning into something really big and, and, and helping more people all over the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's going to be our third Ukraine trip. It's going to be Pakistan. It's going to be a couple of the other communist countries that we've done some stuff in. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's possible for everybody to, to co-labor, to work together. Yes, sir. Uh, not everybody has to go, all right. uh, but we can work together. And, I, and yep. I, I can definitely go. My, my teammates can go. The organizations I work with can go. Right. And man, it just makes it multiplied. That's what yep. happens is everything gets multiplied. You think you're doing one thing, but it, it turns out to be 10 times thing, 100 right. times thing. Yep. And it's the cog in the wheel. Yeah. That's and, how that one person turns into 100 to 1,000 yeah. because you did one thing and you brought people along with you. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I saw how and, COVID happened. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it was actually Man, so happy that this stuff's over with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God. Yes. I, thank yeah, thank we, goodness. Yeah, thank God we lived through that. Um, thank you so here. much. Yes, thank you again. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Appreciate and, you and if you want, you know, if you want to pray after, I'll be available. So each one of you. Do you yeah. want to pray over this podcast right now? I mean, if, if you'd like, you're willing to pray over this yeah, podcast absolutely. on the show. Yeah, well, why not? Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time that you've brought us here together, Lord. It says wherever two are together, you are there also, Lord. So we appreciate you being here with us. Lord, we bless everyone here. We bless this podcast, Lord, that people around the world are going to hear this message and are going to be inspired and are going to be moved to use their gift for good. So we appreciate this time. We appreciate this podcast. And we thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. And we pray for peace in Israel and for peace in Ukraine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.